Our beloved 8% Hard AF Seltzer is now live in over 1,200 locations across the United States. We're now available in Florida, Georgia, oh, Alabama, Tennessee, yeah. North Carolina, Ohio, and Texas. Go to hardafseltzer.com today, click on the store locator, enter your city or zip, and find the nearest location closest to you. Live from our studios in Austin, Texas, this is Drinking Bros Fake News with Ross Patterson, uh, Dan Holloway, Papa G with the traffic. How you feel? Not good. Yeah. The field yeah. reporter, Hot Bob. Delco Dan with Sports. Welcome to Fake News. Yeah, welcome to Drinking Bros. Fake News, everybody. Brought to you by GoSped.com forward slash Drinking Bros. Let's go, D'Anthony. Let's go. I feel great today. I feel spry. Um... Go check out our Instagram. We put that Chippy segment on Oh, there. boy. You didn't have to do that today. We had moved on from Chippy. I'll we'd never moved move on. on from Ch- <laughs> we've got a the worst t-shirt. we've ever done. We've got a T-shirt to memorialize it. I think it is the worst segment we've done, I think. <laughs> Probably, right? Like arranged marriage of a retarded girl, and then it ends up with her dragging a plow through a field. Yeah, dude. I'm pretty sure that's the worst thing it's we've done. It's not great. It's not great, I can tell you that. Yeah, Pop up that shirt there. There's the shirt. Oh, boy. Oh, Chippy. Give Chippy the bit. <laughs> Give Chippy the bit. And then somebody said on the post, uh, Chippy gonna come. Oh, boy, like Gina, dude. Yeah. Same with Gina. Yeah. Gina used to work on the docks, and uh, Gina gonna come, too. Gina gonna come. Speaking of working on the docks, did you see John Coog? John Cougar Mellencamp? Yeah. No. He, he was doing a show the other day um, and told everybody to vote for Biden, and they started booing him and told him to shut the fuck up. And he was like, he just threw a tantrum and, oh, I'm, you know what, show's over. Really? Yeah. Cougar did that? Yeah, he's super gay. Do you uh, have Bob, a clip of that, Bob? Unfortunately, the clip that I keep seeing doesn't show the, pre- the prelude to what happened. It just shows some guy being like, shut up, or whatever, and he's then he gets butt hurt, and he starts to play Life Goes On, and he's like, you know what? Show's over. Show's over. Uh, hey, Bob, real quick, go back to that uh, Google here. Is that Coog's best picture that they used? Damn, they did him dirty with that one. I mean, dude. he looks rough in this clip. I don't know why you're not looking on Twitter. Oof. Yeah. Man, that's crazy, dude. They did him dirty with that, but they did the Cougar dirty. I think it's... Time did him dirty. Is he? He's old as shit. He is. He's also been a chain smoker for fucking ninety years. At that point, so uh, I think he's dating. He was a chain Meg Ryan, right? I didn't know he was one of the chain smokers. He sure was. Well, her uh, face is all fucked up too. Sure was. But he's seventy-two. I mean, how good is he going to look? Is Here he seventy-two? Here it is. All right, play the clip. Let's see. And there's Cougar. Looks like he's uh, a mechanic. Oh. Sucker. Yeah, here's the thing, man. You don't know me. You don't f-ing know me. Hey, Joe, find this guy and let me see him after the show. Guys, I can stop this show right now and just go home. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Since you've been so wonderful, I'm going to cut about 10 songs out of the show. Here we go. Wow. Uh, you cut it. What happened? Oh, man. You know what? Show's over. Shut the fuck up, dude. A 72 year old man throwing a tantrum and walking off stage because people didn't want to get lectured about politics at a goddamn concert. Wow. Wow, what was the what was the comment? I don't I don't know. Was it Biden? Was he saying vote for Biden? He it was something pro Biden, 
And people were like, oh, God, Sean. My God, dude. dude. My God. Cougs. What happened, Cougs? That's disappointing. 72 years old. Also <laughs> looks like a, a dirty old mechanic in this. Yeah. I mean, weird. he's wearing a fucking onesie. Just a onesie, like a little zip em up. Yeah. Like, uh, like he's doing oil changes. Coveralls. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, very, very strange to uh, see there. Actually, it had nothing to do with, with Biden. Oh, what, what was, was it? it? Uh, the guys were the people were just really drunk, uh, <clears throat> and this guy, uh, one concert goer, just screamed, "Play some fucking music!" And the guy goes, "What do you think I've been doing?" Uh, Mellencamp goes, "What do you think I've been doing, you cunt?" And uh, and then that then we saw the rest of it. Mm. Okay, then I'm all right then. Maybe. Yeah, that's fine. No, yeah, he's, then, he's then still all right, then. he's still a bitch. Just get remove the one dude from the crowd. Maybe the guy pissed all over him. You know, I don't know. Can you really not just? Say, hey, the guy he told him to find so he could fight him after the show. Sure. That's what he was animating, uh, I guess. But why not just say, hey, get that guy out of here. We're going to finish the show. Cause I think it's 72 years old. You're pretty much set off by anything. Why he's still playing right now? So No idea. <laughs> he, was, <laughs> he was just reminiscing about his dead grandma. And the drunk guy was like, play some fucking music. Yeah, nobody wants to hear about your dead grandmother. You no, know? Nobody wants to hear about any of your dead relatives unless they were slave owners. Exactly. Now, if he said, hey, my, my dead grandmother was a slave owner, then we all would have been, you know, all in on that. Mm -hmm. uh, having some audio issues today. Is it just, just uh, us here, or uh, are we good on YouTube? I'm here. I hear we're fine. Good. Okay. I think so. I'm cutting out. Your the, over here. Don't use the white headphones. Yeah, use the black ones, too. So I'm not making this a racial thing today. Delco? It might be that I'm cable. Not. They worked fine this morning. Well, they do not now, and uh, I'm going to have to go fucking solo here without them. I'm a pro, so who fucking cares? Let's rock today. God damn it. Trump's on trial. Donald John Trump is on trial in Manhattan. Jury selection has become... It might be Harlem. Is it Harlem or Manhattan up there? Reuters is saying New York somewhere. That's very vague. Uh, the judge overseeing former U.S. President Donald Trump's criminal trial dismissed two jurors on Thursday as lawyers struggled to assemble a panel of 12 jurors and six alternates for one of the most high-profile trials in American history. Justice... Juan Merchant, this fucking guy, excused one juror after prosecutors said that he may not have disclosed prior brushes with the law. What did he do? Uh, did he keep, keep calling people law dog? Law don't go around here, savvy. Not sure if he did that or not. Don't you ever um, put your hands on a cowboy. But he didn't specify why he dismissed the juror. Uh, the judge had previously excused a juror who had said she felt intimidated because some personal information had been made public. She said family, friends, and colleagues had contacted her after deducing she was on the jury. I don't believe at this point uh, I can be fair and unbiased and let the outside influences not affect my decision-making in the courtroom, the juror said. Just say you're a coward. That's it. Just say you don't want to be mm -hmm. on jury duty. Well, I mean, you can't say that because they won't dismiss you for that. I, to be honest, if I was on this, well... On this particular case, I would probably stay on it just for the lulls. And I would do wild shit. I would first take it super seriously and angle towards being the jury foreman. And then I would completely derail the entire process. Yeah. For no fucking reason other than the waste of government's time. Because fuck them, you know? But in a normal jury situation, I would be doing everything in my power to get the fuck out of it. That makes sense. Uh, this one's going to go a long time. Now, they did have... Uh, seven people say yes to the dress in this. Two of Trump's jurors are lawyers, actually, um, which is very odd to me. That doesn't happen very often. Uh, so if there wasn't enough plot twists in this goddamn thing, um, two lawyers will sit on the jury. Now, that could be good news for the former president, according to some experts on juror behavior, especially if Trump's defense team plans to mount a technical legal argument uh, to yeah, try to win an acquittal. And the technical legal argument would be the one that we talked about a year ago, which is that the only reason he's being tried for it, the only reason that the 
the miscalculation, which is what it is, on the financial paperwork is considered a crime is because it was in the furtherance of an, another crime or to cover up another crime. And that crime is in a completely separate jurisdiction in Atlanta, which has not been adjudicated as a crime yet. So technically speaking, this should never have been this should never have gotten this far. It shouldn't have gotten past grand jury. They, this doesn't meet the requirement to make any of these things anything other than a fucking citation, basically, right? No. Um, now, the other side about whether or not it's good for Trump with these two lawyers are the two law firms they come from. The first one is Hunton, Andrews, and Kurth, LLP. And if you look on opensecrets.org, about 61% of their um, spending on political candidates goes towards Democrats. So that's not great. 61%? Yes. Well, it's not NPR. Uh, no, it's not not as bad. Um, now, if you look at their more recent expenditures, it's, it's, it's still about 60-40, but they do spend some amount of money, not in 22, not since 21, but they spend some amount of money on Republicans. And that, these are the partners at the law firm, by the way. Okay. 60-40, um, though, also they're in New York, right? Yeah, which isn't uh, no, no. That law firm is out of Houston, I believe, actually. Oh, okay. Because um, I say like uh, some of that, it's like oh, they maybe they gave money to a Democrat, or like in Texas, you'd be like give money to a Republican, but it's only because like that's the only person who's going to win the race. Yeah, so yeah Maybe no. donating to a primary campaign. No, th they're in. I don't know, though. They're in Houston, and they've given quite a bit of money to Beto. If that Yeesh, tells you anything, yeah. Yeah. that like multiple people have given quite a bit of money to Beto. So the other law firm, we don't know the the, the juror's name, but the other law firm that the uh, other attorney juror comes from is from uh, Detmer Gunderson. And if you look at their expenditures on political candidates in just the 2022 election cycle, 90% uh, Democrat. Um, Yikes. In 2024, 100% Democrat. In 2020, 94% Democrat. So he's definitely getting fucked <laughs> no matter what happens there. Uh, now, legal experts have said uh, the reason for having lawyers, uh, not having lawyers on a jury, is that they're not emotional thinkers. The profession requires them to do analysis, and emotional thinkers uh, get more easily swayed by the other side uh, that goes first, that tells a good story, which is like the normies, you know? Like, if you get somebody from, uh, like, a real New Yorker, like a homeless person was on the, on the jury there, and he was like, man, I, I don't know what's happening here with Mr. Trump, but I think um, the prosecution has presented a good case. That guy could be swayed, whereas a lawyer can't be swayed. Now, there's an interesting term that they use to describe one of the law firms here as a white shoe law firm. What does mm. that mean? A white shoe law firm is a firm that mostly just services um, Ivy League or upper class clients, right? Okay. Like hedge fund managers, Ivy League people, generally speaking. But hedge fund stuff, usually. Well, if this is involving uh, essentially campaign money at this point, would that be a good or a bad thing? What do you mean? Uh, that to have a white shoe guy in there because they would know the technicalities of this. Um, I don't know if it's good or bad just based on that, but I think a white shoe attorney would probably be more likely to side with Trump than not. I agree. What about a white shoe clown? So let's say they had, a, they had a clown on, but they didn't have the red tips, and it was all just a white shoe on the clown. Uh, that sounds like a poor to me, and I don't look poor people in the eyes. Yeah, I don't look poor clowns in the eyes either. Any poor person. No. I don't want to see you. So um, They're known uh, for rape. Well, now, now you're trudging into Trump territory with, with the comments about Mexicans. Well, I mean, they're here. There's lot, nothing we can do about it. A lot of them are rapists. Um, although I do have some news on that front. Go ahead. Uh, but we'll, Fire away. I don't know if we have, do we have any immigration related stories today? Eh, who cares? We're doing um, what we want today. Let's see. We're living in our own world. We're, we're the fucking goonies today. It's all over once you go up Troy's bucket. We'll be here as long as it fucking takes today. We, me, Dan, and Chester Copperpot. Okay? Did, I, did I mention to you that now we are encountering trained military personnel, um, and I ask from where, this is from Border Patrol. Um, everywhere, China, Russia, the other day, I was reading an interesting report on an Afghan, uh, Afghani uh, special forces operator specialized in infiltration and deception with execution video clips on his phone. Mm. Um, Great. Yeah, and then there's also been several instances of Chinese nationals running past gates at military installations. 
Perfect. Um, yeah. So that's that's good. Yeah. Uh, I feel pretty safe. Just there's going to be a terrorist attack in the U.S. Maybe multiple before the year is over. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it, it certainly feels like it. you can't let nine million people into the goddamn country uh, and expect everything's going to be rad. It's like twenty total right now. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. No, no, no. Twenty in the last. Since the beginning of the Trump administration, although it was pretty light for him, I think maybe 750 total from him. Did you see the ones from Africa that uh, stormed city court because they got kicked out of their luxury hotels and they went to go and protest? That was fun, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, that's like um, if you if you're walking through your house and you see I don't know what those bugs are called, but the ones with the big legs and wings that eat. Uh, mosquitoes, mm-hmm. right? That's their primary function is to eat mosquitoes. So if you see them out in your backyard and shit, don't fuck with them. But when they're in your house, it's like, all right, maybe I'll let, let that go because he might eat a mosquito. But once they fucking fly into my face, I kill him and 30 of his friends Yeah, just to make a point. So I really yeah. feel like uh, we need to start publicly executing people. Well, we're not right now, and uh, we're allowing this shit to go on. We're also allowing this trial to go on, which is complete and utter horseshit. If you haven't heard the, uh, the greatest part of this yet, uh, Judge Juan Merchant, who is somehow still alive, because um, I'm shocked by that. Is he old? Uh, not, not, not that he's old, but one would think at this point here, as shit gets ramped up, some, somebody's going to go fucking nuts either on the jury or one of these judges or one of the prosecutors. Like, I feel like something's going to go down by the end of this. And uh, the latest one was he wouldn't let President uh, Trump see uh, Barron's graduation, his high school graduation. I, I heard that was not true. My, my understanding was the graduation is actually on a separate date. Uh, pop it up. Trump made a speech about it coming outside of court. Well, oh, I'm sure like he, uh, he, about 25, 30 percent of what he says is accurate when he's in that mode, though, right? Sicko mode? No. Uh, he doesn't. Well, he may be a Travis Scott fan. Yeah, I think he, he, is. he is a hip hop fan. Yeah. Um, no, I think it's the mode is more like uh, uh, 1920s politician. Just like an adjective that would m- most readily describe one of the seven dwarves from Snow White, mm-hmm. followed by his political opponent's name is typically how he goes. That's the formula for it. It's like a weird <laughs> Sleepy. Matrix. Sleepy. Yeah. Sleepy Chuck Todd. Grumpy. Sneezy. Yeah. Says he ha- Strokey. I think Strokey is better. Strokey. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it says there hasn't been a ruling on that. Yeah, that's not what I'm curious about. Is the court date the same date as the actual graduation? Because I have seen a couple of people point out that it wasn't, but I don't know who was right on that one. And it's uh, Post Malone playing <laughs> congratulations at the graduation. He is a repube. Yeah. So Trump that. just requested that the judge not hold court proceedings on May 17th, the day of the high school graduations. That. Uh, the judge has not ruled on that request, saying he preferred to wait to see how the trial unfolds. So I, uh, this is, and this is a news story from two days ago. Okay, so May 17th is a Friday. So yeah, that's during the weekday. Typically, court is in session there. We'll see what happens. But oh, if, if, guys- if he misses Barron's graduation, this is more fuel for Barron to just go over and kill the world one day by himself. Do you think Barron Trump has a tramp stamp? No, no. I think it's, I think it's some kind of weird blood inside of him right now. Um, well, he's probably been getting the adrenochrome since he was a young one. Why not? Right? That's why he's so large. Nobody else in their family is anywhere close to that size. Nobody's close to that in real life, dude. Mm-hmm. I don't um, even know if anybody in the WNBA draft that uh, Delka was watching. The like Don Jr. is about my height, maybe six. He might be six one. I don't know. His hair is kind of big, so it's hard sure. to say. Sure. Eric is about the same height, yeah. and the women are all tall as well. But not Trump like, is six three. Six seven is not six one. No. You know what I mean? No. All the other kids are shorter. Now I don't know. Um, Baron, which, which one have the same mom? Baron's the only one from Melania, right? I believe yes. so. Yeah. I yeah. think, um, the two sons have the same mom. Yeah. Wait, Don there's junior and Eric have the same mom. Yeah. And then Ivanka is, Ivana is Ivanka's daughter, right? Yeah. Cause I otherwise so. that would be weird to name your daughter yeah. after your ex-wife. After your ex-wife. Well, yeah. so I think actually, yeah, those three have the same mom, I think. And then, and then it goes to, uh, what's her name? Tiffany. And then Baron. Oh, I forgot about Tiffany. Yeah, we always forget about Tiffany. Everybody so. forgets about Dre, too. And that's why Eminem wrote that song. Somebody needs to write a song about Tiffany Trump. I never forget about Dre. People do, though. Yeah, they do. And they're wrong for it. They're, I can yeah, tell you it's, that. it's a goddamn tragedy what happens. But uh, what do you think the, the final outcome is going to be of this Trump trial here? 
Now that we know some of the jurors and everything that's going on. Um, I think it gets thrown out, probably. I think they're going to go forward with it. Um, no, I mean, uh, yeah, I just think the jury will say this is nonsense. Uh, but the crazy part is he's got to be in court every single day, which I don't really understand. Uh, apparently, one of our listeners wrote in when I said this the other day, apparently because it's a criminal trial mm. and not a civil trial that he's got to be there every day, um, which is total fucking horseshit to me. Because um, that's going to lead him all the way up through June, probably. Mm -hmm. Can't go campaign, can't do shit. So he's been doing local stuff there. So when he gets out of court, he visited like a firehouse the other day. Uh, a couple policemen got ambushed in New York. I mm -hmm. believe he visited their family as well. So he's doing things locally, but he's not going <laughs> to win New York anyways. What? Um, do you follow Antonio Brown on Twitter? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it, good it, good Twitter follow. So he yesterday or well, he's out of his fucking mind. Yeah, so. it may have been actually this morning. <laughs> it's it's just AB eighty four if you're looking for it. But um, so yesterday he posted something about Caitlin Cart looks like she's hairy down there. Uh huh. And then he posted uh, he does a thing called Cracker of the Day. Okay. And it's just like some white person he's either appreciating or making fun of. Um, and Caitlin Clark is there because she blocked him. Well, obviously, uh, I, mean, I get it. Dude. I just saw it pop up. It's funny to me. Oh, yeah. It's uh, scroll up, Bob. Oh, God. Scroll up, Bob. Down. There it is right there. Yeah. Well, that's where he blocked her. Caitlin, Caitlin Clark. But this is you. the. Yeah. Uh, we can't show that on. T on uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. On the YouTube. <laughs> nope. Nope. Um, fuck it. Hey, dude. Looks like she keeps it hairy. <laughs> You know, <laughs> he's just firing off whatever, dude. AIDS, look, see, when CTE kicks in, there's no going back. Well, look at the hashtag he puts in most of his posts. It's CTESPN. Look at the fucking first and uh, you can comment see, there. It says, is Dan Holloway It's always this. fucking Baker trying to rile me up. It's like, first thing in the morning, everything I see, when I pop up on Twitter in the morning, almost every morning, the first thing I see is that piece of shit trying to fucking get me riled up about something. That's hilarious. Yeah, Clay, Kaylin Clark is uh, is done with the bullshit there from AB. I don't think she it. looks like she's hairy down there necessarily, but you can as an NBA as a WNBA player. That's too much. You too much be, friction, yeah. Because yeah. she shaves her pits too. Maybe if she had hairy armpits. I would give that some credence. Yeah, but I don't. Um, I don't give it that. Yeah. Look, go to. Um, do you want to take a break? For what? Go to Kaylin Clark's like Instagram or something and find a bikini pic, and you can see immediately if she's got a fucking. If it looks like there's a cock down there, that means it's throwed out. No, I think she's fine down there. I has, have we ever seen her in a fucking bikini? She, there's got to so. there's got to be some kind of picture of her. I don't in think something. there's one, dude. I, I I don't think you're. She lives in the gym. I don't think she's ever been on spring break. Yeah, no, yeah right. she's a fucking teenager for Christ's sake. Well, she's 22 now, but she, well, yeah, she's grown. She's grown. Or up 21. Now. She's 21, right? 20. Because she's a junior. Maybe. She, she, Is that her in a bikini? Yeah. All right, pop it up. Scroll, I'll uh, zoom in on the puss, if you don't mind. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Sorry, you know where you came. No, I, it's, it's bros. not that. I think, uh, I think YouTube ended up nuking this today. No, why? That's a tough one. I'm kidding. Uh, that's a tough one right there. I, there's, no, she definitely doesn't have a hairy bush. Bob, it's, it's too far away. It's clean. Okay, it's clean. It's right. clean. I don't know. C clean, maybe. Maybe, maybe it's shorn. Right. Atlantic shrimp. Yeah, or something like that, but it's definitely not throwed out. I don't know what he's basing that on. See, AB, I appreciate what you're doing out there for America, but you really got to do your homework, bud. <laughs> you're making people look bad. <laughs> he's just, again, firing off CTE nonsense, you know? I know, but, like, it's a superpower, so use it. Use, use it wisely. It for, use it wisely. Use it wisely. Uh, next up, who is Iran really? Iran has begun intensifying its crackdown on uh, hijab restrictions in several cities over the past week with violent arrests reported across the country by opposition groups and human rights agencies. The intensified assault on women across Iran comes as the regime announced the Nur project. That sounds fun. The project aimed at dealing with anomalies has involved a heavy presence of the morality police in several cities since this past weekend. According to Iran's uh, Mer News Agency, which I love, I love, I've got the app, it's great. Police have been instructed to focus on positive behaviors and avoid using negative behaviors as much as possible. Reports from Iran suggest the crackdown has been violent, including sexual harassment, beatings, the use of tasers, widespread arrests, and breaking car windows, 
among other measures. So I saw a lot of these on Twitter. Bob, if you can pull them up, uh, police are just kind of getting out of their vehicles and then giving women raps on the beak mm -hmm. in front of their dudes and then kind of pulling away. I saw one woman being dragged by her hair in the back of a van here, and I'm not sure why. What's the, what's the, you've got to stay covered up at all times? Yeah. Every fucking the, there's, second? There's a lot of rules. I don't know which ones they're keying in on specifically, but definitely having the hijab on all the time. Um, not being in front of your, the male. Like, you have to walk behind them and shit like that. They have a lot of weird little rules. That's fun. Yeah. Um, they're, they're called the morality police. So it's like the jump out boys here. Yeah. But they jump out only on women or gay people. Great. And they smack them up. They, they'll drive them down the street, smack them up a little bit, and then dump them. So everybody out in the streets who's this pro-Palestine, which obviously Iran funded. Uh, well, the Palestine's not a real place, else. but yeah. Totally. Yeah. This is what you're fighting for here, guys, is uh, they hate gays, they hate women, mm -hmm. and you got to walk behind the dude. Now imagine if we did that in real life over here in America. We told all women to walk behind us and stay mm -hmm. covered up at all times. Well, I mean, I, I don't want them covered up, but... But you want him to walk behind you? Yeah. Um, so Dina Gil Galabov, maybe, a journalist, sure. uh, and she's a student at Tehran's uh, Behesti University. She was arrested last week. Um, oh, actually, it was Tuesday this week, so two days ago, after posting on X um, that she had been detained and sexually assaulted by morality police at a metro station in Tehran. Um, she said that the morality police violently detained her and tased her as she was in, um, trying to access the metro on Monday. Uh, she added that one of the officers made insulting comments about um, Maza Amini and women in general. Maza Amini, I think, is that woman that they executed. Okay. At, what was that, two years ago? Yeah. Maybe that was last year, I don't remember. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, this is uh, – they, they also have – put a lot of the morality police in plain clothes now and they're just walking around and, and uh, metro like so the subway and shit like that mm -hmm. or the mall wherever and if women are acting up they just slap them up a little bit um, or, or grab them take them off in the vans like rape them dump them in a fucking alley somewhere why are they raping them uh, because they're fucking savage cunts oh gotcha they're just not good people obviously but this is what I meant if you watched the show yesterday we were talking about culture this is what I mean when I when I say that uh, the way that Islam is practiced in almost every Islamic country is completely incompatible with civilized society. Yeah. Right. The the mark the hallmark of a <clears throat> of an advanced culture isn't technology or scientific breakthroughs and that shit. It's whether or not they've left the barbaric parts of their historical beliefs behind. Right. You there there's not one Christian country on earth, and I'm not. You guys know how. That, like I don't, I don't, I don't hate anybody for their religious beliefs, but I'm not. I don't believe any of this stuff. You cannot name a country on earth that has a Christian government or or Christian heritage that imprisons or executes people for not adhering to rigid religious beliefs like this. It doesn't exist anymore. And when when so when we say that Western culture is better, that's what we mean. The end. And it's, it's not up for fucking debate either, right? And these people should they choose to continue in this behavior should be isolated from the rest of the world. I, Do not let them anywhere near our fucking country. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, and when Trump banned all that travel from the Muslim countries, mm -hmm. great. I, like, I'm, I'm totally fine with it because uh, I just don't give a shit. I don't give a shit about the entire Middle East, and we, I've talked about that a lot this week. I don't care. And these videos keep coming out over and over and over again. And if you're a woman out there, how the fuck are you in one of these protests? for pro-Palestine or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, man, we want to be in the back. We want to be raped. We want to fuck. Yeah. How are you still doing that? I have no idea. One of my, I have a friend, um, she is uh, very Jewish, lived in Israel for a while, a long time, but mid-20s, very attractive, um, lives in San Francisco. And she had, like, a lot of her friend group. It's starting to, I think it's starting to fracture now a little bit. But a lot of her friend group are those people. Like, trying to tell her, like, well, well, I mean, what about what Israel's doing to Palestine? Like, that's not even a real place. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. My God, man. My God. Like, what? You, do, you, do, you, do you think that the average person, and I mean this sincerely, do you think that the average person 
who's at one of these pro quote unquote pro Palestine things or just bitching about on the internet has any idea that Hamas is the literal government of of Gaza since 2006. Mm-hmm. Almost two decades now, Hamas has been the government, and we've been funding it, uh, using Qatar as a cutout. Us and Iran, actually, have been funding Hamas. We're, we're funding both sides of this shit. Yeah, well, that's something new. We funded both sides of Iran, Iraq. We've done this many times, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it, it's, the answer is no. Those people don't know that, and I'm not sure if knowing it would change anything either, right? I don't know, man. When I see these protests and I see women there or gay people, I'm like, you guys know what's going on over there, right? Like, th- these are the rights you want because they would fucking kill you or rape you in 10 seconds mm-hmm. if you stepped foot in that goddamn country. So let's not pretend it's great or it's ever going to be great over there. It's always going to be a fucking shithole. So to me, again, I fuck, I said this yesterday with, uh, was it Neuralink? I love to just pop in an Elon Musk thing where every single country from the Middle East is a race from my brain. I can't read it. I can't see it. I can't hear about it. All of it, dude. And it's just a blur. If something pops up, it's just real fucking blurry. And I'm like, oh, well, that probably sucks. Whatever the fuck that is. You know what doesn't suck is our first sponsor, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Pop it up, Bobby Three Sticks. They got that new massage cover that they're uh, popping up for pre- is it pre-order right now, or did I just get the email? Either way, I fucking order the goddamn thing. I'm amped about it. Every single product they have is amazing, and it's all 50% off right now. Mattresses, sheets, pillows, adjustable bases, all of them made in the good old U.S. of A, not Iran. Or Palestine. They don't make these in Palestine. Okay? So if you were wondering if the beds were pro-Palestine, they're not. Palestine is essentially the land of make-believe. <laughs> There's a little trolley that goes around. That's it. It's oh, fucking stupid. Except for the, this time, the trolley's rigged up with explosives. It sure is. But not these mattresses. These are, these are explosive-free. They check them before they ship them out to you. So there is no explosives in, in any of their products whatsoever, which is great. You want companies to check for explosives from uh, people from the Middle East. Nothing in these goddamn things. Uh, 50% off with the promo code Drinking Bros at checkout. Fill up the card as high as it'll go. It doesn't matter if you put 80 mattresses in there, uh, 60 sets of sheets or pillows or whatever. They're forced to give you the 50% off. And when you check out, you're going to see a three-year pay-as-you-go program. No interest as long as you have decent credit over there. You check that box, and then all those 60 items, not only are they 50% off, but you can stretch it out over three years. Put it under a dead relative's name if you want to. Which is a story we'll get to later, which is fun. Head on over to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Next up, we got a good old fashioned foreign aid showdown over the weekend here. Can't wait for that. House repubes are prepared to unveil the much anticipated foreign aid bills. Uh, on Wednesday here uh, with Speaker Mike Johnson, who told members of that this morning. So I read some of these, which we'll get to in a second. The timing uh, sets up weekend votes on bills for foreign aid, national security, and the southern border. Uh, And it comes as members of both parties are openly considering a discharge petition that would force the House to vote on the Senate-passed aid bill. Sources close to Johnson said said he isn't afraid of a potential motion to vacate that would try to oust him from his role. A separate source uh, says they expect more Republicans to join uh, repubes Marjorie Taylor Greene and Thomas Massey in their motion to vacate uh, the effort here. Greene immediately criticized Johnson's plans, calling him a seriously out of step with Republicans by uh, continuing to pass bills dependent on Democrats. Johnson laid out his plan in a text uh, to members saying it came after significant members' feedback and discussion. He said the uh, text of three separate bills aiding Israel, Taiwan, and Ukraine, the latter of which will be structured as a loan and include accountability measures, will be posted shortly. All right. We talked about this, I think, a week and a half ago here. The loan thing. Let's start with that with Ukraine. Why bother? They're not paying that fucking thing back. No, that's not going to be a country. I mean, what are they going to pay it back in? Dead bodies? Not sure. 
I'm not sure what utility that's going to have for us necessarily, unless you're planning on using that dead body to get a loan at a bank, which again we'll address later. Um, no, this is bullshit. They're, they're just trying to find any way they can to keep this war going. Mm -hmm. That's it. And, and doing so at the expense of Ukrainian lives. That, this is the message coming from Mike Johnson and the neocons that he represents and all of the Democrats. Funding our friends' summer homes and the military industrial complex is just worth more than Ukrainian lives. Yeah, they don't give a fuck. The end. Yeah, that's it. Um, and as far as splitting up these bills goes, I don't know if he's just saying this or this is going to actually happen. Because then that would force Congress to vote on Ukraine by itself, uh, Israel by itself, Taiwan by itself, and then the border by itself. Now, that's what I think it should be. Will that actually happen? Not sure. Uh, fuck. Three out of the four shouldn't be even voted on in the first place. It should be just the border and our border only. I don't know why we give a fuck about these three other countries other than the, 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 the things you just said two seconds ago here. This makes no goddamn sense to me. What were you going to say, Bob? Uh, I'd say Trump came out with a statement on this today as well. What did he Country say? Social. Uh, why isn't Europe giving more money to help Ukraine? Why is it that the United States is over $100 billion into the Ukraine war more than Europe? Uh, and we have an ocean between us, a separation. Why can't Europe equalize or match the money put in by the United States in order to help a country in desperate need? As everyone agrees, Ukrainian survival and strength should be much more important to Europe than to us, but it is also important to us. Get moving, Europe. Uh, and then he blames Joe Biden for the war starting. And yeah. Uh, and look, I agree with him on this. Um, but he wants to keep funding Ukraine. He just wants Europe to pay more. And, and look, if you're in that stance... Uh, of, hey, dude, I think there's a serious threat or whatever, putting Europe up against it first by saying, hey, guys, give us some more money, and then we'll consider giving some more money here on top of this. Great, because we all know the fucking answer to this. Europe isn't going to give a, a goddamn dollar. Uh, he tried to get us out of NATO. He tried to get us out. What was the other one? Uh, the Paris Climate Treaty and Paris, all the other. The Paris Accords, uh, we left. We left the Iranian nuclear deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so he's saying, hey, guys, if you want to treat this seriously and actually win this fucking thing, give some goddamn money and then maybe we'll pony up some in the end as well because he knows goddamn well they're not going to do it. But I, are we pro giving money to Ukraine now? No, no. I'm not at all. No, nothing. I'm not pro anything somebody else said, no matter who the person is. And I think nobody else should be either. If you're, if you're basing uh, your political talking points off the words and beliefs of another human being, then you're a fucking idiot. And I think personally why he said this is let's see if anybody else is actually going to give a fuck about this war or about this country to do anything. And then maybe we can do some shit about it. Well, if you remember, uh, he did go to NATO, Bob. I'm sure you could probably find the video, but I don't know if it's really relevant now. But he went to NATO and told them they don't start spending more on GDP. Russia or like shit's going to go down. Yeah. And the German ambassadors were like, oh, look at this fucking guy. Fucking we dumb. played it on this fucking show. Fucking dumbass. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But and then and it, he it all... he mapped out everything at that table of what was going to happen yeah. to the entire fucking country. And, and I th and I think he was. I think during that meeting he was specifically talking about all the uh, immigrants they were allowing in. I like think he saw about uh, gas. Oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. Well, first it was energy it was, it right. was uh, energy independence for Germany. Uh, then it was war, and mm. then it was uh, immigration. And it's like. All of it came true, and all of it's happening now. Some countries are starting to fucking do some shit about immigration over mm. there. Got some breaking news here, What actually. do we got? Um, blah, blah, blah. Um, so Mike Johnson tried to amend the rules today to get rid of the motion to vacate. Really? And they got voted down. Oh, boy. You don't say. You don't What's say. What's a word that starts with F and ends with agate? That I could call him. I'm having a really hard time. Me of too, it. man. Nothing is coming to mind here at Does anybody all. Anybody got any? <laughs> no. All right. Maybe just let us know in the chat. I think he's uh, going to be out of there pretty shortly here. But yeah, how does this? How does this shake out over the weekend? Um, if there is a vote on four separate bills, uh, like Mike Johnson was implying. Well, he's not. Yeah. I mean, I, that's not going to happen, probably. No. Uh, no, that's I would, not going to happen. I would expect. Um, and the other part of that is the next after he fails this weekend, this is I'm just reading tea leaves. But I, I assume that <clears throat> that uh, uh, Senate Republican leadership is probably going to go to him along with the whips from both chambers and say, you need to fucking announce your re resignation so we can have a vote 
without the Democrats taking over the speakership. Yeah. That, that would be how I would handle it, frankly. I mean, at this point, though, do, 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 does the Republicans even deserve to have this slot anymore? Because they can't figure it the fuck out. No, no, no. They don't deserve to exist. I mean, it's a fucking bullshit party. <laughs> Uh, Mike Johnson, by the way, said he will take personal risk. Pull up this video. He just gave an impassioned speech on why we should fucking... Personal risk? Fund Ukraine If here. you want to take some per personal risk, Mike Johnson, how about you uh, empty your own bank account and send it to Ukraine, then pick up a fucking rifle and go there? Uh, he can only fucking do that twat. if his son says it's okay. Yeah, exactly. Play this video. Yeah. Buddies. This, is the, <laughs> this is the one here. Oh, no, that's true. His son checks his phone to make sure Mike Johnson isn't jerking off. Really? You didn't know that about this? No, I didn't this know breaking it. news. They're accountability buddies. How do you not know this? I didn't know they that. They check each other's devices to make sure they weren't looking at anything they could get their wieners yeah. on. Well, Bob, hand over your phone. I, get it, I need to check yours, okay? Only buddies. stuff that gets your wiener hard on You're married, Bob, and, uh, and I think you should respect your marriage and your wife, and I hope there's no videos on that phone of yours, okay? Uh, now, let's, let's play Mike Johnson's uh, impassioned speech here. My, my philosophy is you, you do the right thing and you let the chips fall where they may. I, I don't, I, if I operated uh, out of fear over a motion to vacate, I would never be able to do my job. I, I, look, history judges us for what we do. This is a critical time right now, a critical time. I don't give a fuck state. about history's I, judgment. I could make a, Me neither. You know, I, I could make a selfish decision and, and, and do something that, um, th th that's different, but I, I'm doing here what I believe to be the right thing. Um, I think pr providing lethal aid to Ukraine right now is critically important. To put it bluntly, I would rather send bullets uh, to Ukraine than American boys. This is not a game. It's not a joke. We can't play politics of this. We have to do the right thing. And, and I'm going to allow an opportunity for every single member of the House to vote their conscience and their will on this. And I think that's the way this institution is supposed to work. And I'm willing to take personal risk for that because we have to do the right thing. And history will judge us. Okay, my, my, so you can press pause here. Uh, Dan, God, what a just an absolute piece of fucking shit. It's selfish for American people to not want to send billions of our dollars to get robbed by the government and then have that money sent either to Ukraine or to their friends in the military industrial complex while they can't put food on their tables for their families. That's selfish. Mm -hmm. That's a, what country do you fucking represent? Because it's not this one. No, for sure. Uh, and I want to go back to his statements about sending bullets over boys. I don't really like the term boys. Well, they're, they're trying to make they're trying to create this false dilemma where if we don't send all of our money and weapons to Ukraine, then we're going to end up having to deploy troops. Why? Why? What's the red line in the sand exactly? If they just fucking nuked Ukraine tomorrow, what would be our responsibility there? I would say nothing. And what would we lose? What would the world lose if Ukraine got nuked? Well, Ukrainian people. Right. Like, I like Ukrainian people. They're good people for the most part. But, most, but besides like, the people, because uh, you always look at the big picture with, with exports or whatever the fuck they have there. Mm -hmm. What does Ukraine have that the whole world needs? Like, the Middle wheat. East, I understand, because of oil and shit like that. So wheat would be a big one for those guys? Um, yeah, wheat. I think they produce 12% of the world's wheat and then a bunch of natural gas, mostly for Europe. And uh, that's been a problem. That's why they're that's one of the reasons that they're having to lean on us economically so much is because they can't export their wheat, corn or natural gas because uh, uh, Russia has them blockaded, essentially. Right. OK. Do we get any of that wheat in, in America? Uh, it's mostly for Africa. I think okay. we grow our own wheat and corn here. Do we As a matter of fact, of we pay people to not grow corn here. Do we get any of that natural gas over there? Uh, I don't know if we import any of Ukraine's natural gas. I wouldn't think so. We have the largest natural gas reserves in the world, so I don't right. think so. So I'll go back to what, what Trump said. So why isn't this Europe's concern? Because if it's that much no, he over said in was, Europe. He said it was both of our concerns. Uh, no, but he said Europe should give the fucking money. And then, and then we'll give some money afterwards. But he's, but he's, Europe's got to pony no, up. He he's, said we both should be paying. He said they should be paying equally, but we both should be paying. Yeah, he's, We've he, already gone in, though. He's been bitching about this since he, he was campaigning in 2015 and 16. Um, they, uh, like, no, no NATO country other than us commits to NATO. Like, no other country in NATO, not one, spends 3% of their GDP on NATO. Yeah. Or, on, or on national defense, rather. Not yeah. one other than us. We're the only ones that do it. So just contract NATO. Like, hey, guys, you haven't really been doing what we asked you to do, so we're going to terminate this partnership. Uh, maybe start doing what you should, and then we'll check back in in five years and see if you still exist. But people flipped the fuck out when he said that, and mm -hmm. they wanted to do it. 
the House of Representatives is expected to vote on sending additional aid to Ukraine and Israel on Saturday, um, by the way. So Saturday is, is what they're locked in for as part of the $95 billion military funding. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that package currently, as it stands, says it is going to be divided into four bills. The third issuing uh, funding for Taiwan. How do they sneak in Taiwan out of all this? Um, we still have to kind of be involved in Taiwan enough to keep China from um, just completely taking it over until our microprocessor plants are done here in the Midwest. Okay. So that one we need? Sort of. <laughs> if you want to buy trucks and PlayStations and shit, yeah. Eh, do we? You know? Yeah. Yeah, we need to. We can't have that again. It, there's too much trickle down. There's too many industries that get interrupted when vehicles don't get sold. Okay. It also fucks up the vehicle market pretty badly. Uh, now, seeking to appease the more right-leaning flank of the Republican Party, Johnson announced a fifth bill to provide further funding for security measures at the southern border with Mexico, a policy many in the GOP have made clear is a top priority each bill requires a separate vote. That's exactly how it should be. Right. So if that actually goes down on Saturday, like they're saying, how do you see that shaking out? Um, well, his only real hope for this, I don't think these bills will even get to the floor, and here's why. So his hope for this, and you can see it at the bottom of this article in Axios, um, his hope was to get rid of that vacate rule, motion to vacate rule before he put those bills out individually okay and he expected democrats would help him well they didn't yeah so because yeah. they want him out of there yep. they want hakeem jeffries in there yeah hakeem jeffries who um man i was fucking going off on him earlier what did i say to that piece of shit um hang on let me find it he, he said uh something about defending democracy against all enemies foreign and domestic nope yeah. The Constitution. Did you read your fucking uh, oath of office there, you fucking dummy? The Constitution against all enemies, foreign, domestic. Not democracy. We're not even a democracy. Democracy is the, the fucking buzzword for this election for Democrats, though. Uh, democracy will die. Even the Washington Post. Remember they changed their fucking uh, motto when Trump got in office the first time? Democracy dies in the dark. Fuck off. And fuck you, Hakeem Jeffries. It's Obama 2.0. I get it, dude. He looks and sounds like him, and they really want it instead of Biden, and they're waiting for him to die off. I don't know when that's going to happen, okay? Uh, but Jesus Christ, get Mike Johnson out of there. Get them all out of there. I don't know how this is going to go down on Saturday. I'm imagining, though, there's going to be a shit ton of Republicans voting for this, for some of this bullshit. They uh, might have the numbers on some of these. They want more? Um, they'll, I, I think they will have, well, I don't know. I don't think they will. Um, I'm not sure where the Freedom Caucus, as it is, stands on Ukraine funding, regardless of it's a loan or not. I don't know. How many votes do they need to pass, Bob? Uh, you need 218, typically, to pass in the House. Mm. But they're, they're four short, I think. Mm. They're a couple short because of re resignations. Yeah, yeah but mm. I, don't think, I don't think all the, re the repubes are going to stay. Uh, along party lines on this No, one. and I don't know if uh, Democrats will vote against Like, they, they love that military-industrial tit, too, but I don't know if they're going to vote against it just to fuck him over and get him out of there. Interesting. It, if you it try, makes, it, 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 it makes political sense for them to vote against it, even if they agree with it, because yeah. it'll force him out. It, that, and it's just, I think, probably electorally, it's smart to make them look like a mess, mm -hmm. right? So they can't get anything done. Their party's a mess. Don't vote for that party. That would be my guess as to why they wouldn't, yeah, why they would keep fucking sinking anything mm -hmm. he put out there. Yeah. Uh, the whole thing's going to be a goddamn mess. And since, you know, there's not a lot of sports on Saturday, televise this in prime time. Let's mm -hmm. see the votes. Cut into ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox. Let's see this shit on prime time. Go to fucking CW, too. I don't want to leave the CW out. Yeah, make them fight. Let's see it. Let's see I, it live on air. I want to see, like, Macho Man-style stuff. Oh, yeah. See AOC's heavies out there. And, I mean, really pump up the people. You know, record ratings for the WNBA draft the other night. Put AOC front and center. Put, uh, who's our hot one? Bobert? Let's put <sighs> Bobert and her boltons out I, there. I hope that's not the And have the one. two of them go. That's, that's from each party? Who do we got? I don't know on the repube side. But, uh... 
It does. You mentioned the WNBA draft and the high ratings for it. It doesn't. It feel like remember that scene where Thanos uh, says all that for a drop of blood. Yeah. It's like all that for seventy five thousand a year for the best <laughs> player we've ever seen. All right, cool, man. You know where she got her money, by the way. Uh, she just signed a massive deal this morning with Nike. Mm. So she got eight figures for that shoe deal. Yeah, and that makes sense because she's got a massive brand and social media presence. But uh, personally, I'm actually going to boycott the WNBA until they raise their salaries. <laughs> and uh, in solidarity, right? I, I won't watch one WNBA game until they raise those salaries. Is it weird that I think they should only raise the salary of Caitlin Clark because that's all – like, I'll watch. I think her. they should pay her five mil a year probably and not pay anybody else. That's what I, I agree. Like, just like the uh, Harlem Globetrotters, just have her and a, a, four other people play anybody, and I would probably watch it. That's it, yeah. I just, I'd like, I'm going to tune in for her, and that's about it. Uh, Bob, I don't know why you're looking on an actual political website for who the hot ones are. I was just seeing if I could get a rundown of all the pictures. Mm. Just, like a, just like a little yearbook. And I then... see. It's Bobert and the Boltons versus AOC and the Heavies, dude. It's, it's, uh, what do you like? Do you like Big Naturals? Let's see. Or An- do you like the Boltons? Anna Paulina Luna. Um, the Air Force girl. Yeah, she maybe. was, uh, shit, she did drinking broettes back in the day. Yeah, I mean, she's a bit kooky, but um, she's been doing some decent shit. She was shit. nice in real life. Yeah, she's nice. You yeah, and I like, chatted with her for uh, a while. Yeah, I just, like, their politics there is very similar to Bobert, who's not smart. Pull up that last photo, Bob, that you had with the uh, the red dress. Yeah, but she's a, she's a pretty lady. And then somebody said Maya Flores go. from Texas as well, but I don't remember what she looks like. I don't know what Maya Flores is like. Yeah. She, she's the one that won this Democrat heavy seat down here in South Texas. Yeah. The, the Mohican. And they said she wasn't Mohican enough or something. Yeah. She's the brown face of white supremacy, maybe. I don't know well, what they're saying now. That ain't Texas, friend. Okay. But look at her. That'll, that, like, that's fine. But Bobert in the heavies, dude. Like, I mean, the, uh, the Boltons. I got to give the edge to Bobert still. I mean, this is airbrushed all to hell and back, but she's not a bad looking lady. She's, yeah, because you and I have, have chatted with her. No, that's like, Maya Flores. Oh, sorry. That's they all look Anna. alike. All Mexicans look alike to me. So I apologize for it. That's, all, that's on me. I would say me, uh, Anna is probably better than better than Lauren Bovert because she's not a fucking imbecile. Uh, I don't, you got to take that out of it. Though. I can't. It's one night. Nope. It's one night at the Circus Circus in Vegas. Here's the problem. I don't pull out. I understand And I don't that. wear condoms either, so I have to be prepared to raise a child with this person. I don't fuck anybody I won't raise a child with. Really? That's right. Okay. Um, because with, with Bobert, let's say, can you, get, can you get it out of your mind that she worked at Burger King? That's not the problem. <laughs> the problem is that she has circus music playing in her head all the time. And you can tell just by looking at her face. Look at that picture. Put oh, it up there, that's Bob. A, you did her dirty, Bob, you fuck. <laughs> you did her real goddamn dirty with that photo, dude. Look at that dude. fucking double vein going that's through her forehead. That's bullshit, v, Bob. V for fucking vendetta. That's fucking horseshit. That is fucking horseshit. That's West fucking Colorado, buddy. Show her jacking off that dude in the theater, dude. That's the Bobert we know and love. But yeah, show her that one with Trump. Look at that. Oh, man. That's he had to lean down. She's probably a tiny. Though. That's where she is small. She's like 5'3", five, 5'2", five, maybe. I have not Which is that's really. normal for a woman. That's not, Look she's not, at Bobert. She's not a midge or nothing. And she's, a, probably, she's probably wearing heels right there, too, you would think. That's a, that's a fun time, guys. If we're going Congress, that's a fun time. All right. Yeah. But it's Bobert versus AOC. I don't want to hear any more about it, dude. I just I need to get jerked off at a higher class of musical. You know what I mean? Like you're going to do a movie adaptation into a musical like give me, you know, Wicked or something. Bob, you're not getting jacked off in Wicked, friend. The tickets are too high price. Here's the thing. You got to be willing to get to be thrown out of the theater. You're not getting thrown out of Wicked. Tickets are too hard to get. It's like Hamilton. You're not getting jacked off in Hamilton where it's just like, all right, shit, dude. Are we going to we gonna get thrown out of Hamilton? I have to get jacked off in Hamilton because as soon as they start talking about slaves, I'm bricked up. That's true. You know what I mean? Yeah. So something's got to be done about this hog. <laughs> <laughs> How far into Hamilton do they start talking about slavery, I've, Bob? I've actually never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> but I assume it comes up, right? <laughs> Was Hamilton even black? No, no, he's he's West African, okay, from West Africa, but he was no, like no, he's from he, the West Indies, West Indies, I mean, but yeah. he he was uh, he was like French and English, I think, Scottish right? a little bit, yeah, yeah, something like that. And wasn't it Lin Manuel Miranda who played him? Yeah, he's a Mohican, I would think. Or yeah, 
my, Puerto Rican or some shit. Puer, what is he? Puerto Rican, yeah. Uh, my guess is it comes in in the third song, so about ten minutes into the. Uh, okay, so the about ten, yeah, ten minutes into the musical, so that's when you need to get jacked off. Then, if you get thrown out of there, Dan, like, I, that's expensive. He's Mexican and Puerto Rican, yeah. So I can't, uh, I can't concentrate. Like it's gonna ruin the show for me, to be honest. And let's be clear. If you see a random dude getting jacked off in the theater, maybe that ruins the show for you. That's not, not, that's not, not me. But it, the lights are mostly out. Yes. They had to use fucking night vision to catch her jacking that dude off. They I don't sure think anybody did. around them even noticed, so yeah. fucking mind your business, man. Exactly. What are you, you going to do with your load, though, when you're finished? Uh, well, that's her problem, not mine, Bob. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Bob. You go to that uh, Hamilton gift shop beforehand, get one of those <laughs> Hamilton coats. And then lay that down over your private parts, and uh, you get jacked off into a hammer. Well, I think um, Deadpool actually solved that problem. Which is? Popcorn bucket. Have you seen their popcorn bucket? Oh, yeah. 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 I think you got to keep it, though. They made those. So what they said in their press release was that, and it was kind of jokey, jokey, but they said they made the the opening too big. And it looks like a Sarlacc mouth or whatever the fucking Liz Albion or whatever the fuck. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds a lot like Pop it up on screen there. But it's Wolverine and Deadpool, and they have retard looks, and they have a big hole in their mouth. That right there will work for me. Is that real? Oh, yeah. That's great. Yeah, they're doing it to make fun of the Dune 2 yeah, yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah. But that right there will work. Like, and it doesn't have to seal around it if I'm putting it in there and getting jacked off. And it already comes with butter, so yeah. you got lube. Then I'll just leave it in the bucket, and when we're done, when everybody's applauding and shit, and I'll fucking throw it up on stage when everybody's throwing flowers. Just yeah. seeing just semen and popcorn just yeah, getting hurled at Lynn manuel Miranda. I, like Hamilton says, I'm not throwing away my shot, right? <laughs> Is that what he said? Yeah, I'm not throwing away my shot. You got to keep it in you honor do, of the musical. You do have to keep that shot for sure. No, I don't take come to a second location. You, you leave it there? It's a rule of mine, yeah. You never okay. travel with semen. It's a mistake. Because <laughs> you'll end up leaving it in too many places. It's slippery. It is, dude. And that you're just turning everywhere you go into a fucking crime scene. I'm not doing that. Yeah. I've, I've committed too many crimes as it is. They'll find you. You don't need that DNA out there. Uh, next up, sponsor wise, we got mybookie.com. Promo code Drinking Bros doubles that first deposit all the way up to $1,000. Uh, you guys who started a new blackjack show on Drinking Bros Sports. Uh, Delco and Hot Bob, you got to play in the MyBookie Casino. It's a real fucking dealer, right? Yeah, it's a real human dealer. Casino Fridays premieres this Friday. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. It's really fun. It moves fast, though. It Does it really? Fast. I yeah, saw yeah. Delco editing it, and uh, it was dope as shit. Um, does she move fast? Are you allowed to tell her? Like, how does that work? She just mo- it just moves quicker than normal because you're not really interacting with them. Like it is a real person, but you know you're at a blackjack table, you're chatting, you're having a good time. Yeah, dealers well, giving you advice like well, who I'd hit there. Was she uh, Asian? She they were all Antiguan, I believe, or whatever. Mm. I don't know. So where's, where's that at? Caribbean. They're ca- Caribbean. Caribbean. Oh, they're Caribbean. Yeah, that's nice. Because the ones in Vegas are almost all Asian. Sure, old Asian ladies and don't speak much English, if any. Right, that's been my experience at the blackjack tables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is fine. No emotion. Yeah. That, that's the person you want there. They have no fucking, no tells at all. Yeah. Just stone-faced all the time. You don't want somebody, like, getting excited about their hand. Exactly. Uh, unless you're obviously at Hamilton. And you do want to get excited about your I hand. get excited about somebody else's hand in that <laughs> situation. <laughs> but their casino is open. Uh, it's live everything. So live roulette. You're actually seeing the dealer, interacting with them. Uh, live blackjack. Live... Uh, poker, all that shit. It's fucking awesome over there. And let's face it, uh, sports are. Eh, we're in the. We're starting to hit the the map period until next week. Um, NFL drafts. We get a live show uh, with Derek Wolf next week, uh, next Thursday night. We're betting a shit ton of money on that. Uh, Delco and I bet on uh, the Delco Dan's dirty golf picks uh, earlier in the week. Who's winning? JT Poston today. Yeah. The Poston rings twice. Uh, tons of stuff to bet on, and then the NFL draft's going to be a banger next week. So load up that account, head to mybookie.com, use that promo code DRINKITBROS to double that first deposit all the way up to $1,000. Turn your love of sports into your new side hustle at mybookie.com. Next up, TikTok. 
The Chinese embassy has held meetings with congressional staff to lobby against the legislation that would force a sale of TikTok, according to two of Capitol Hill staffers. TikTok, uh, which is owned by Beijing-based company ByteDance, has repeatedly denied a relationship with the Chinese government and sought to distance itself from its Chinese origins. But now, with the fate of uh, legislation to force the sale of the company facing an uncertain path forward in the Senate, the Chinese embassy appears to be leveraging its political weight to protect the company's future in the United States. Why? Um, Because they're making a fuck ton of money, I would imagine. The government is? Um, The company. I know the company is, but why does the Chinese government give a fuck if if it's just some random company in China? Because we sell companies over here all the time to, you know, overseas and uh, different countries and all that other shit. Why was it matter? Why would it matter? I don't know. Okay. I I really don't know what their intent is. I I think they just don't want to get boxed out of the best, um, the best market for tech, probably, right? Um, Yeah, that would, be, that would be my guess. But who knows? Ch- China is usually a couple of steps ahead of the U.S. when it comes to information operations and shit like that because we're fucking idiots. Yeah. Like, we just, oh, fucking, let's go get involved in these wars. You know what wars China is involved in right now? Which ones? Uh, none. Yeah. They're involved in mining lithium and cobalt and shit in Africa. That's what they're doing. We're getting involved in geopolitics for some reason. No idea why. Which costs us money. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like their ledger is mostly credits and ours are mostly debits. Uh, But with this one here, uh, if the Chinese government is getting involved, this will lean into the conspiracy theory that obviously they're using this to scan uh, kids' faces and DNA and and ID and and all that other shit. Who gives a fuck? Every Apple phone is made in China. Yeah. Every one of them. And every child looks into one, and all their biometrics, their retinal scan, their fucking facial ge- uh, geometry is all in there already. It's over. So that's like saying uh, that, that they're fucking scamming people to get a copy of the phone book or something. No, it's, it exists, and it's widely distributed already. That's nonsense. I don't, what I don't understand is why the U.S. cares, but I guess I kind of do. I think it's probably because... <clears throat> They're angry that China is doing to American citizens what they're trying to do, but they're doing it better. Ah, uh, gotcha. Right? Yeah. Because the U.S. government tried to leverage Twitter, all social media, really, and all of corporate media, legacy media, whatever you want to call them as well, to program people, and it worked. They stole multiple elections doing that, in my opinion. Um, so it worked pretty well, but they still now they have like this huge... They're being rebuffed now by a, a bigger portion, bigger segment of... There's a lot of buyer's remorse because people feel duped by them now. Whereas nobody feels that way on TikTok. People just keep consuming content, right? Mm-hmm. No matter what they put on there, it doesn't matter. Whatever the new trend is, eating Tide Pods or whatever the fuck, they just, people fall in line and do it. So China's just better at it, and the U.S. government is either embarrassed or angry about that, probably. Yeah, because uh, I'm with you as far as uh, the phones and everything else. Those tiny little Chinese hands... I'm making all this shit over there. You know, it's kids, obviously, in, uh, in factories or just closets. You know, you could probably pop 18 of them into a closet and have them make shoes, phones, all of it. I've just assumed they've been scanning our faces and everything else forever. But uh, the people in Congress who are saying, hey, uh, China wants to do this because of their own uh, selfish needs to figure out, you know, everything about Americans since age fucking mm. 10 or 15 or whatever – this certainly lends itself to that. I just I mean, shut the fuck up about to it be, if I was China. To be honest, I think it's probably more something like what Elon's doing with Twitter, which is using it to train his AI machine. That's what I think. That like the for the last twenty five years, including the dot com era, the most valuable thing you can get is data on people, right? Mm-hmm. So you can leverage that data. You can sell or you can package whatever you want to do, even if it's stripped of all the PII, the personally identifiable information, and leverage that to some company that's trying to market and sell their product. Um, the new thing that's going to control everything tech-wise in our day-to-day lives, uh, uh, from programming robots to do jobs, to assist people, make movies, all this stuff, it's AI now. Mm-hmm. So even if you take a loss on something, let, let's say TikTok goes upside down, 
Twitter is upside down by a pretty, like at least $20 billion right now, right? Mm -hmm. But Elon doesn't give a fuck because that's not the point. He's not trying to make money on uh, 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 on Twitter, I don't think. He's trying to make money on it. I, what I think he's trying to do, and this is why he's made it a priority to get all the bots off, it's not for user experience. It's to get clean data to feed into his AI engine that, that basically runs Tesla, like all the cars, which is a smart move, right? Yeah. It's, like, it's like running a fucking social media company at a loss for 10 years uh, and collecting mountains of data on people like Facebook did and then selling that data and then going from a three trillion dollar market cap to like a two. What, what's their? What's Facebook's market cap now? Meta's market cap, Bob. I mean, it's in the tens or hundreds of trillions at this 1. point. One point two eight trillion. Jesus Christ. That's that's the value. The market cap is. It's at I'm seeing one point two eight trillion market capitalization. Oh, man, maybe I'm looking at the wrong word here. Watch this. Either way, dude, it's so much goddamn money that I think with, uh, I'm with you, with uh, Twitter, as far as that's concerned, you make just enough to keep it afloat till you get all the shit you want mm. for the AI and everything else, and, uh, and then you can hop on down the bunny trail and use it for, for what you actually want to use it for. In the meantime, he can have some laughs, some shits and gigs on there, and kind of control people's lives, because it is funny to see how many people actually do make money off of Twitter, just being on Twitter, posting on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then if that were to shut down, especially people on the left who hate Elon Musk, if he were to shut that platform down, I don't know what the fuck they would do for a living, some of these people. Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they there would be some suicide. I mean, there's so many honest. fucking people over there where... <laughs> there are yeah. people who don't even make money on it. That's just their life. Like, uh, what, what's his name? Uh, Keith Olbermann? Yeah. Yeah. Like he, all he does is angry tweet from his toilet all day. Rob Reiner is one of them. Uh, like, yeah. if you took Twitter like, away from Rob Reiner, yeah, I don't even know that we would know he's still alive. They don't, they don't have any like marketable value or skills or anything like that, right? No, it's just like I'm an angry dude, and I and I speak in however many characters Twitter used to be. What was it, 128 or something? I don't remember. Yeah. So that's it. That's it. That's kind of all there is <clears throat> here. Uh, by the way, uh, there's a fucking, <laughs> there's a breaking news here. Students are occupying the West Lawn at Columbia University in support and solidarity with the students arrested in the Gaza solidarity encampments and the Palestinian struggle here. That's funny. Cornell West is currently speaking right now. Oh, good. Good. Cause I'm sure the Israeli government is going to be like, oh shit. A bunch of 18-year-olds don't want us fucking protecting our country? <laughs> Let's just blow this whole thing up. Let's go to 1947 and start over. Let's uh, play that video right there, Bob, whatever the fuck this is. I don't even care what it is. Um, uh, why are they camping out on the lawn right now? For, for Palestine. So what is a bunch of REI equipment going to do for these fucking kids? That let's face Look at them right now. Pretty Dan. much impossible to explain to a white man like you. Of course. Of so course. Don't ask questions. Press play here. I don't even know what this is. I just want to see it live. Let's see. Uh, we both just got emails uh, from Barnard saying that we are. Mm, they, that's two they thems right there. Yeah. Sure is. Uh, for what? What's the charge? I mean, yesterday they they came in. A few Barnard administrators came in and warned everybody. Um, this is like Occupy Wall Street. There were they were just a bunch of idiots in a fucking park. Uh, that we would be in terms deactivate, of yeah, they would deactivate our IDs by 9 p.m. Which didn't happen. I was able to use my ID this morning, but I guess it kicked in just now. Yeah, I yeah. guess they uh, they decided to go through with it. But I thought they were bluffing actually, because this morning when my ID worked, I was like, okay. Uh, but you guys are still staying. Oh no, we're gonna. Yeah, stay. we're staying. Bro, oh, they, they can like, expel me and I'll they, stay. They can suspend every single one of us and we'll still be here. <laughs> they can put us in jail. We'll come back, put you tent again. Like, yeah, we're not leaving. I heard this is also like the designated protest. Like this is where people God, go I would to protest fucking, on campus. I would kill yeah. myself if oh, these were my kids. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Zone, that would be the appropriate so response. What a fucking failure as a parent. Yeah. I would feel like. Well, speaking of uh, weirdo trannies, um, an 18-year-old female student from Rockville, Maryland, who is a tranny, uh, was arrested today, a couple hours ago, for planning a school shooting. Great. Uh, um, 129-page manifesto authored by Yi. I don't know what that Yee? means. 
that that's what they call themselves. Is that a An- new Andrea Yee? That's that's her name. Okay. But I don't know what her dude name is. Probably Andrew. Wouldn't you go with Andrew on that at that point? Uh, I don't know, man. I don't the the ones that go from female to male are uh, uh, a mystery to me. Like the naming conventions. Andy. Usually when it's male to female, it's some stripper name for the most part. It's just some dumb stripper name. Because that's, it's like the whole drag thing. It's a caricature of what they think a woman is. It's not a real woman. So it's like, oh, my name is Delight. I'm like, oh, is it? Is it? Why don't you fucking Delight the fuck out of here? Yeah. Right? Why don't you blow out Delight <laughs> and then get your way out the sleep? Motherfucker. Um, but yeah, with this fucking shit that's going on right now, the, I mean, again, we'll, we'll go back to what we said at the top of the show. These two women would be fucking killed and executed in Gaza right now. Uh, yeah. They're yeah. not even wrapped up. Yeah, do you, do you know how shocked people are when I tell them um, that there are Arab Muslims in the IDF? You know that's a thing, right? No, I didn't. No. I didn't. Uh, but, but these two chicks right here would have to be wrapped up from head to toe. They'd have to walk behind dudes. No way would they even be able to, to have a tent and have a little sleepover in the middle of the park. I don't even think there is a fucking park in Gaza, is there? Is there a um, park? Is there a dog park out there in Gaza? Sure. I mean, it's just like wherever the dog wants to take a shit. You can't <laughs> tell the difference. I mean, it's all rubble now, so it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, there's 1,500 Bedouin Arabs that currently serve in the IDF. Okay. Man. Just seeing these their fucking faces, like, how do you not know what actually goes on over there? The other thing, too, is the, the report that I'm reading right now is uh, there's currently two or 3,000 of them that are uh, occupying the lawn. Send them over there and just say, hey, if you guys actually want to help, like, just get, we'll get you a, yeah. a, a plane and, you know. Do you remember that scene in uh, Enemy at the Gates where they're just handing one dude a rifle and a, uh, some ammo and another guy just a bandolier of ammo? He goes, hey, when that dude fucking gets killed, just pick up his rifle and yeah. start shooting. Yeah. Same thing. Back up a truck full of guns uh, right at the Poland border and to start passing guns out to all these blue hairs. Like, hey, the world's depending on you. Go get you it done, You can do buddy. it, yeah. right? Uh, Bob, play this video real quick here because this makes it seem like it, this is set up. How does everybody have the same fucking color tent? That's the, it's, it, all of these tents are identical. This is the tent. So press pause right there. I, how does every single student have the exact same tent? Um, that doesn't make any sense to me, man. Somebody's because it was, funding this bullshit. It was purchased by a labor union. Uh, this tent, man, I'm not totally sure. Let me get this is, again, here. why I think we need fucking a homeless HOA system in the, in the U.S. I wish those were hard AF tents. It kind of looks like this tent you can get on Amazon. For Do you want to get... I can talk to Brandon and get tents... Made and we'll pass them out to homeless people. Yeah, I'd be fucking great, dude. Let me text really him. get that hobo marketing. Let me text him right now world. about that. As a matter of fact, yeah, see what he says about it. But oh, speaking of uh weirdos, Josh Wolf texted me this morning. He and his son are going to come do the show like three Fridays from now. Oh, fucking great. Yeah, I love this. Guy. We haven't had his kid on before, but he's funny. no, no, he's great. Anyways, uh, looking forward to that. Uh, next up, ad wise, we got bioprotein tech. Dot com promo code drinking bros gonna get you thirty dollars off over there. Men over thirty five, you're gonna want to hear this. Sorry, dude, shit sucks. You know, uh, shit sucks after thirty five. There's nothing you can do about it except take some fucking Bio Pro Plus. What is it? It's HGH. Human growth hormone without all the needles, without the doctor visits. You don't even have to fake it. You know, some of those apps where you have to call your doctor and just kind of fake it on the phone and be like, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling bad. I'm feeling sad and everything else. Uh, you're probably noticing you're not getting those gains in the gym like you used to. You might not even be pumping out loads in the bedroom like you used to. This will help with that. Uh, I know we've talked about TRT on the past, in the past on this show and, uh, and our good buddy Dr. Frank over there, but uh, testosterone's only half the battle. Here's where bioproteintech.com comes in. Uh, they give you a little vial. Uh, Dan and I have been taking this for about she, roughly seven months now. 
little vial you pop it underneath your tongue you're gonna feel a little sting so you know it's work in there you'll get a great night's sleep and a lot of people are noticing results in days instead of months and uh it's a great fucking product uh d'anthony with bio bioprotein tech dot com uh what you what you racking over there for uh, for how that's helped you? I, my skin feels better for me. Um, I mean, HGH does a lot of things. It'll make uh, joints. I guess you're not going to feel the strain on your tendons and ligaments that you normally do. I can tell when I don't take it. Yeah, the same. Because when like we went for, out of town, I forgot yeah. it, dude. We went to fucking Nashville. Yeah, if I, I go know. for a week, for sure, yeah. I can tell. Um, and then the sleep. It's the only thing that it's the only sleep aid I've ever taken. I've said this before. That's never that actually makes me sleep, but doesn't make me drowsy the next morning. It's the only one. Yeah. Uh, huge fan. Go to bioproteintech.com. Use promo code drinking bros for $30 off your first order, or just click the link in the audio description. And I believe it's on the YouTube description too, Bob. Is that true? Yeah. Good for you, Bob. No microphone. You just screamed it out. You knew I would say it for you. Proud of you, Bob. Proud of you guys out there as well. Head on over to bioproteintech.com. Promo code Drinking Bros gets you $30 off your first order. Next up, don't say illegal. Don't say it. Using the term illegal alien is reportedly an infraction worthy of suspension <clears throat> at a North Carolina high school. What? Damn it. That's my state. That's North Carolina. In an email to the Carolina Journal, Leah McGee described an incident. Uh, in Central Davidson High School in Lexington, where a 16-year-old son, her 16-year-old son, was suspended for three days last week over the term illegal alien. According to McGee, an English teacher uh, was giving an assignment that involved using vocabulary words such as the word alien. In response, her son asked if the teacher meant like space aliens or like illegal aliens without green cards. Another student allegedly took offense to the term and threatened to fight McGee's son, forcing the teacher to contact the assistant principal. The staff later deemed the term to be offensive to Hispanic students and punished him. Because of his question, our son was disciplined and given three days of out-of-school suspension for racism, McGee wrote uh, to the Carolina Journal. He is devastated and concerned that the racism label on, this, on his school record will harm his future goal of receiving uh, a track scholarship. We are concerned that he will fall behind in his classes due to being absent for three consecutive days. Uh, she also stated that the school has so far refused to remove the suspension from her son's record and that her family has already begun working with an attorney. There it is. You knew a lawsuit was coming out of this, right? Uh, yeah, it sounds like the mom there is just trying to fucking make a couple of bucks, to be honest. But well, it is it is interesting to me um, that the student who threatened actual violence, the, the Latinx child who was upset by words, uh, threatening actual violence, no repercussion. But a guy who said a, a phrase that is stock standard, it's a literal phrase used by the federal government, is uh, suspension worthy? I'm surprised that the federal government still uses it. Uh, they don't now. Do they strike it? But they will again when Trump is in office. Should he win? Obviously. Uh, hopefully, I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know anymore, dude. I don't know anymore. I hope we hope Papa Trump gets back in there. No idea. Uh, but yeah, this look. You do any of this shit these days in a high school? You're getting sued immediately. Uh, even that fucking Indian kid for uh, Deadspin. Remember they accused him of being in blackface, and then they sued, and Deadspin uh, went oh, bye-bye? Oh, yeah. What was his name? Josh. Uh, Running Bear. R Ricky. Little Child by the River. Rick, Rick Dave. Yeah, Rick, Rick Davey Boy, uh, Blackfeet. Uh, whatever his Indian name was, not real sure. He sued everybody. Sure did. And uh, Wait, you mean the child at the Chiefs game or the yeah. kid that stood? The child at the Chiefs game took out Deadspin, and then the other one, uh, who was the one on, uh, in Washington, D.C.? Nick something? Sandman? Sandoval. Yeah, Sandoval. Nick Sandoval. But he, that, was, that didn't have anything to do with that. Uh, uh, do you think Nick Sandoval is related to our Sandoval that's missing? 
Oh, Lizette Sandoval? Mm -hmm. Not sure. I've got a meeting with TechStot tomorrow. Bob, can you check on that? Yeah, yeah look for Lizette and, Sandoval. Uh, while you're doing it, uh, find out how Herschel's doing, if you don't mind. Yeah, how is Herschel doing? We haven't doing? checked Bob, on Herschel Bob, is he in a while. down by a point down there? Uh, no, in all sincerity, I got a meeting with TechStot tomorrow at noon. If you had to guess Herschel Walker's IQ, what would you say? Oof. Now, 100 is the average American IQ. I'll say 32 out of respect for the late great OJ. Well, Simpson. I think that was I, his number. I think Down syndrome is 50 to 70. Yeah, I'd say he's beneath it. I'd say he's at 32. You know, because he likes vampires. He likes the fun stuff, like vampires. Because usually black dudes. Uh, are into like ninja movies and shit, kung fu. They love that stuff. Yeah, right. That's their thing. That there's a. The, I'm talking about the nerd ones, the ones that are into shit like comics and vampires and shit like that. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't be into vampires and werewolves. They're not fucking no. Teenage white girls like yeah, that shit. Yeah, I was gonna say you got that market. Spar sparkly high school vampires. That's a teenage white girl thing. Twilight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Twilight. Um, but if you're out <laughs> there, Herschel, I'm sorry. I just I I think it's 32. Only because he rushed so hard that he probably hit his head a few times. A lot of CTE for Herschel. Yeah. I believe he fought, too, didn't he? Didn't he fight in, like, the UFC or something like that? Did Herschel fight? Yeah, that's still his, uh, his picture, profile picture on Twitter. Look at that. Boom, dude. That was last week. Sure was, He's dude. out in them streets fighting vampires and shit. Raising them hands, dog. Let's go, Herschel. Fuck, I wish he was on the ballot for our election show this year. Does it say run, fight, win? Is that what it says over there on yeah. his thing, on his profile? Good for him, dude. I'll, I'll vote for him no matter what he runs for. Same. Just because I think it's funny. I think he could change America. You know? Oh, man. I think, uh, I think he, he could change America. What's the video that he's still got up there? Is that a campaign video that he's still rocking? Yeah, yeah. This is his old campaign video. And that's still at the top of his feed? Yes. For the audience, play it, Bob. He's, he hasn't really tweeted in a while, uh, but yeah, here it is. Well, he's busy, sure. Bob. He's one of the most genuine people that I think you'll ever meet. The quality and the fabric of the man is top notch, and his values have been formed in small town, yeah. right school, Georgia, and those are some good Small values. town values, he's rich. The biggest rich. thing to me about Herschel is the heart <laughs> uh, of a servant a fucking leader here. because he wants to give back and to help the people of Georgia and to benefit Georgians. Herschel's just a good man. One of the best. He's cut from a rare cloth. I'm Herschel Walker, and I approve this. Sure. Oh, damn it, man. And he didn't win. <clears throat> Look at that. That uh, was the guy that was going to lead us out of this fucking bullshit. Dude. Bob, will you find that? This is just for my... Yeah. For me. That Herman Cain campaign commercial where there's smoke, and he just, like, slowly turns into the camera, smiling and nodding. It's the creepiest shit I've ever seen in my life. Is he the inventor of Godfather's Pizza? I don't know if inventor Because I do not how you want... Say that. I do not won any slander against Godfather's Pizza, which is still one of my favorites. Godfather's Pizza is terrible. It is, is the, um, it's, it's amazing. It's so good they sell it in stores. Remember we looked for it in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Yeah. And it was I, closed down, and I'm, I was super fucking pissed. Um, but I think you found it in, like, uh, Whole Foods? Are they selling it in Whole Foods? Yeah. <laughs> if you're looking to, to really send some shit into the studio, don't send wedding invitations or anything like that. Just send Godfather's Pizza. Obviously, make sure that it's packed in something so that it maintains its uh, freshness. But send some Godfather's Pizza into the studio. What's this one, Bob? Is this Herman Cain? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's at the end there. 2012. He's dead now, right? Yeah, Trump killed him. That's right. That's at, uh, right I think though. it was in... COVID, right? Pahenix, Yeah. Pahonix, I think it's, it's called. Operating officer, the yeah, we don't need to watch the whole thing. Let's go to the part where him, he's doing that weird shit. I don't mind shit. that white man speaking for a little bit. Look at this. Fuck yeah, dude. I believe in that guy. <laughs> yeah, Herman. Now, yeah, Herman. Now play the Mike Tyson version. Uh. <laughs> because that's a thing, too, because it's 2024, and that's the world we live in now. Is he doing one too? Oh yeah, it was on Funny or Die, I think. Yep, I got it right here. That's awesome. I don't know what all he says. It's just the ending. Fucking is so funny. Hello, I'm Herman Cain, the man who's been shouting the number nine on your TV. I used to be the CEO of Godfather. Yeah, I it is Godfather's Pizza. Broke to make my children hate pizza. But now I'm running for president and leading in the Republican polls. Why? 
Because the tea party loves crazy, and wants me to hate black. And I'm crazier than a shit hot rat. And I'm not going anywhere. I'll win this Republican He's nomination because with your support, I can and will be much crazier. Kane! I'm going to wear a flag pin the size of a fat baby's head. Kane! And show off the cool <laughs> handshake me and Jesus have been working on for when he comes back to Earth. Okay. My alternative energy plan will be to use illegal aliens as human batteries. Like in the Matrices. As part of my Trump stance on immigration, Taco Tuesdays will be changed to Pizza for Thursday. Kane! Finally, my vice president nominee will be a computer program to think like Ronald Reagan. Please insert a jelly bean into my USB port. I run on jelly beans like Ronald Reagan. I love you. Chocolate might be the flavor of the week. But crazy is the taste Republicans never tire of. I want to be with your president because this king is able. And if you give me time, I'll make you a fable. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Way better than the original. Both equally great. It's it's a tough call there. It's not a it's not it's not a tough call. They are equally great. It's like hurt by uh, nine inch nails. Yeah, but then I like the Johnny Cash version better. Most people like the Johnny Cash version better. Yeah. yeah. Man, dude, I forgot about Herman Cain. Uh, let's not forget though how great Godfather's Pizza is. <clears throat> how much how much would we have to raise from the audience for you to get a Herman Cain tattoo? Oh, for me? Yeah. Here, so we were, here's a, is it a, is it his fucking head or it's is his it? head, yeah. So we're thinking about um, doing some crowdfunding for the seltzer actually. Yeah, why for not? hard AF. Why not? The same way we did for the movie yeah. back in the day. Um, well, because everybody wants it open in their states, but it's super fucking expensive. Yeah. So yeah. <clears throat> so you know, raising money to do that, and then giving people. Whatever, having Shares a, pool, the company, a yeah. pool of equity for the public or something like that, and then, but also obviously there would we would have to incentivize these things somehow. Correct. What would be the dollar amount that I would get a Herman Cain tattoo? Yes. All right. So are we we're talking face? His whole head, yeah. His whole fucking head. Well, I mean, what, you don't want just the face. What the fuck would that look like? No, I mean, uh, like a portrait, right? Yeah, yeah like that's right. Like, like yeah. pretend you're Mexican, Lopez. and he's your family. Oh, member. okay, great. Pretend you're Mexican, yeah. and he's your abu- abu- abuelita, uh, yeah. abu- abuela. I don't know what abuelo. a fucking abuelo. Yeah. Okay. It's well, that's grandfather, words. and then uh, yeah. abuela's grandmother. Yeah. So if it was my abuela, oh, we we'll say, eh, let's go three by three. Three inches by three inches, possibly four yeah. inches by four inches. <sighs> It probably, I mean, that's a lot because I get to explain that to my kids. Probably like getting 100k for something like that, you know. Of I Herman think you Cain. should go higher than 100k uh, since we're talking about equity stakes and companies. Hey, hey, guys, hear me out on this. I do respect Herman Cain for he was the CEO of Godfather's Pizza, so that plays into it. I'm not going <laughs> to discount what he did as a great man who served this nation proudly at Godfather's Pizza. If you get a tattoo of Mike Tyson's face on your body, do you also get? the tattoo that he has on his face? No, but I think you have to get the baby. Doesn't he have a baby tattooed on his arm or, or chest? Uh, let's see. And whose baby is it, too? You know what I'm saying? Like, is it his own baby, or is it him as a baby? I'm not really sure which one it is, but uh, a face tattoo kind of ends the discussion. I'm, t- I'm talking about, like... We set the total amount. We need to raise whatever, $1.5 million. Sure. And if we hit that, then you get his face tattooed on uh, you. Not from an individual donor. He right. actually he does have a baby tattooed oh, on man. his chest. Is that, okay, so who is it? Uh, it's his daughter who died at the age of four. Oh, that's sad. I don't oh, know that. fuck. I didn't know he's got a, a daughter that passed away. What's her, uh, what's her name? Uh, fittingly, it's Exodus. That is the uh, title of a Bob Marley album. Uh, There's also a book. No, it's probably Moses? the Bob Marley album. Maybe you've heard of him? No. Bob Marley, it was a great album. I mean, Bob the Bob Exodus Marley. is literally the Jews leaving Egypt. Exodus, music for the people. That's probably Bob Marley. I'm going Bob Marley, just because it's Tyson. Well, there's a new movie coming out. I uh, saw it. Bob Marley. He and I, but me and Bob Marley uh, share a birthday, by the way. Do you really? Bob Marley, Ronald Reagan, Babe Ruth, uh, Hitler. I think, no, Hitler's 420. Yeah, I saw the movie, by the way. Uh, is it good? 
the actors are good. It's shot well, but the script isn't very good. Mm. Sorry. It's too bad. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about it. Uh, you can watch it. It's out now on streaming. Uh, next up, we got the new murder bot that came out. This is a fun one. Boston Dynamics has retired its original humanoid robot and unleashed a new model called Atlas, which is fun. The pace is fast. The step's still a bit jerky, though significantly more fluid than many of the new commercial humanoids to which we've been introduced to over the last couple of years. Bob, show this fucking thing. Oh, my God. Dude. I mean, it bends in ways that you wish your fucking wife bent. My God, this is going to kill us all. When are they going to put a vag on this thing? By the way, this is not AI. We Earlier on RPR, you showed the AI trailer of, with uh, Henry Cavill as Bond. James Bond, yeah. This is not This AI. is real. This is real. Uh, so it took me a few views of this. Um, Bob, and you can play it one more yeah, time. Play it again. It's, Dynamics it's, thing. it's still kind of herky-jerky in the motions and stuff, but... This thing is fucking crazy. Crazy. And it's going to kill us all. Yes, that's right. Yeah. How many years until they make enough of these before they turn on us? Because let's face it, what the fuck could we do against this thing right now? Um, I mean, so some of the things they cleaned up, they made it look nicer, like not as threatening. I, I don't know if it was just the Black Mirror stuff that made it look threatening. I don't know. Right. Uh, they hid all the cables. There used to be exposed cables and wires and stuff. Those are all hidden, shielded now. Uh, they took some of the armor off of it, I think, which is probably a good idea. But, yeah, we're all going to die. We're all going to die. And, and that thing, so the face on that thing looks like a giant mirror that your wife would use with one of those ring lights on to get ready in the morning. Well, maybe that's what it's for. <sighs> so she's, the, the robot can look directly into her eyes as they're fucking. Man, this is not good for any of us right now. Well, I mean, think about it this way. You put um, a fleshlight or a cock on that thing, and it can turn its face into any face you want. Now, that I'm all for, but I don't need the powerful robot bullshit to go along with it. Just make it a sex doll, then. Well, that, anything, anything is a sex doll if you use it properly. Sure. But with this, though, man, that does not. that looks like a train killer. That's going to kick down my door and then probably shoot a laser out as I'm eating the last <clears throat> slice of Godfather's pizza and it, it like make my entire body evaporate. Well, I've told you about some of the new... We were talking about this uh, at the Masters, actually, um, regarding how the West, as it is, might retaliate against Iran. And I, and I don't think this is an altogether bad idea. So the new drones that we have have something there's an ai driven technology called swarm technology swarm like a swarm of bees or something mm -hmm. um <clears throat> which means you can program 20 25 50 a thousand who knows however many drones and they operate as a single unit right kind of like the parts individual parts of your body yeah um or like a hive of bees or something uh, uh, uh i don't know what the collective noun is for ants but whatever that would be um, um, and then there's a, there's a, a similar tech in AI that uses, ins it, it communicates with all of the drones instantaneously. So you can pro, you can give it like 15 protocols. I want you to defend this road. I want you to look for vehicles that have this particular color. I want you to look for human beings that are carrying weapons, shit like that. But you can also program direct facial recognition in it, right? So if you had retinal or facial geometric scans of everybody that works in the, in the government of Iran, you could literally just unleash a thousand drones, fly them over, the, over Tehran, and with program with those people's faces, and it'll sit up there and monitor the ground until it can find their faces, and it just goes and kills just them. Yeah. And I'm all for that. that I, don't, I don't want to be killed by a robot. I, I, I wonder how it would, like, what would, what would it look like in Iran tomorrow if we did that and just all of a sudden all the people are still there, but the entire leadership is gone? I mean, we tried that in Iraq, and it didn't work out so well. I don't think uh, just the Middle East, and again, <laughs> I hate to keep harping on the Middle East. Uh, I don't think anything's going to help them ever. I really don't. I think if, if we took those drones in there and just nuked out all these fucking people and said, hey, create your own democracy, you can be free and uh, not wrap yourself up in a bunch of bullshit or, or not be gay or whatever, I think they would still find a way to fuck it up. I think the Middle East is, is just because of the religion-wise, going back to what you said earlier, 
I think it's too far gone, man. And if you believe in that shit, you're not, you're not going to change people's beliefs. You're just not. Uh, thousands and thousands of thousands of years later, um, and especially in a family tree that's built on hatred and all this other shit over years and years and years, you're not going to change it ever. And I think it would be a party for uh, you know two to four weeks in Iran, and then after that, it would they be back on their bullshit and somebody else would, would take over that's just as equally horrific. Sure, and then we could send a thousand more drones with all of their pictures. Well, now that's just fun at that point. So that would be great, <clears throat> and then we keep doing this over and well, over. It's, like, it's got to be entertainment value. It's like, it's like raising children, right? They do something dumb, you crack them in the head. They do something dumb again, you crack them in the head again, and they do the right thing, and you give them a little treat. Yeah. What kind of treat do you give to uh, Iranians? Oreo. Okay. I don't think they've had them before. Not Hydrox either, like real Oreos. The real ones. Probably double stuff. Or maybe quad stuff, which is where you take two double stuffs, pinwheel them, and then fucking put them together. Imagine watching Iranians have double stuffed Oreos this for the first time teeth. ever. black And they're just amped as shit, dude. That could revolutionize everybody. I know Kendall Jenner changed the world when she gave uh, those people a Pepsi. But a double stuffed Oreo over mm -hmm. there? <clears throat> fuck yeah, dude. They're all in. I'd be, I'd be all in on that. Why not? Uh, Sponsor-wise, next up, we got hvmn.com slash drinking bros. 30% off your first subscription order. Ketone IQ. I take a shot of this every fucking day before, uh, before we get on air here. Comes a little, boom, little shot cup right here, whatever the fuck you call this. And uh, in the box, shoot it right over, Boom. Right down the back of your throat there. It's just a shot of natural energy. Uh, it doesn't have sugar or caffeine in it. Uh, when do you use it? Well, whenever you need to fucking re-energize, brother. Uh, DOD's got a bunch of money in these guys. Troops are taking it overseas. Shit, 60% of the Tour de France uses it. It's everywhere. You're seeing it on podcasts everywhere because the shit is fucking awesome, dude. Um, it's one of the top products that people ask me when I'm out. They're like, hey, do you have... There's like a shot of that on you, and I'm like, dude, I've always got it in my backpack. I've always got it on my desk here. Uh, big fan. HVMN stands for Health Via Modern Nutrition. You can find Ketone IQ at your local Sprouts. So anywhere uh, in the world right now, you got a Sprouts. Boom, just pop in and grab it. It comes in uh, one of these shot glasses here that I like to call. I don't know what do you call these, a little shot bottle, I guess? Single serve. Single serve, dude. A little single serve. Or you can get a full bottle and then just drink it by the caps. Get a subscription here sent right to the office. Mine just came today, so I've got fucking all four boxes. Oh, boom, boom, it's up here. Uh, get 30 a month, and then I'm just on a fucking automatic renewal. Uh, I love it. Drink this shit all the fucking time. Uh, now, if you get it at Sprouts, obviously you can't shout in their face to give you the discounts. So you got to order it online. Go to HVMN dot com slash drinking bros and subscribe upon checkout for 30 percent off again that is hvmn.com slash drinking bros to subscribe upon checkout for 30 percent off next up excuse me uh mytha off uh an indiana woman is facing a narcotics charge after she called 911 to report purchasing an inferior batch of methamphetamine and said <laughs> She wanted to file charges against her drug dealer. I get it. Uh, I feel like this is legit. this should be a thing. Yeah. yeah, you should be able to do this for sure. Yeah, as uh, alleged in a <laughs> probable cause affidavit, Sarah Harris, thirty-four. She sounds white, Bob. Pull She's her up. She's definitely white. Yeah. She a honky? She's like a middle-aged white woman. Damn, we got a fucking honky who's doing this shit. Shit, pull her up. All right. It makes sense when I see her here. She's got a new Fonda shirt on. <laughs> oh, man. Sarah Harris, 34, uh, twice made open line calls to the police emergency number, which prompted an officer to visit her residence to ensure that everyone was okay. During a conversation with a police captain, Harris declared that her meth was not what it was supposed to be. She explained that the drug left her feeling as if she was going to have a heart attack, which is also what meth does. So how did she know, I guess? It's a different kind of heart attack. Mm, not the fun kind for Sarah here? Jesus uh, Christ, man. Put her picture back up there. Oh, boy. 
This is the way this happened, dude. Uh, Harris said that uh, <laughs> she noted that she she and a friend had line. quote <laughs> smoked a bowl of normal meth before she subsequently attained the, this meth. Um, apparently, believing that the local sheriff operated a better illegal business bureau. Come on, which man. is not a thing. Um, Harris requested the drug be tested. She gave them her drugs and yeah. asked them to test it. Uh, and said she wanted to turn the person in who provided her the meth. Now, while speaking with police in her home city of Bedford, Indiana, which is probably close to Gary, if I had to guess, because Gary's kind of the epicenter for this stuff. Sure. Or maybe that's changed, but... Eh. Um, <clears throat> who cares? It's Indiana. Harris made the mistake of uh, handing over meth, handing over her, her meth, um, and then the contents of the small bag which carried a red peg design later field tested positive for methamphetamine. So she was just wrong. Yeah. Uh, she also said that Bob, she... Bob, this is easy. Click on the directions thing and then click, type in Gary. Is. She also said that she snorted a line of the meth and felt something different when it touched her skin and nostrils. Yeah. Skin and nostrils. Yeah, she said it like burned or something. I don't remember exactly how, what she said. I read the whole article it's, somewhere. It's a three-hour drive from... Oh, wow. Gary. This is kind of near Kentucky, basically. Oh, well, that makes more sense, doesn't it? You know? That's a four-hour drive. That's 354. There's really no reason to ever go to Indiana. We went one yeah. time, and I'll never fucking go there again. I'm all done with Indiana. Notre Dame is a shithole of a campus. <laughs> no, the campus is nice. No, it's not nice. You didn't like the stadium. It's old. The stadium sucks. The people are terrible. <laughs> Actually, the people are pretty nice. You don't people want to go nice. to a uh, Tin Caps game? No, the, pro the here's the issue that I had mostly with Indiana. It's that Danica serial murdered people all over the goddamn state. Yeah. And made us stop at each one, like, oh, my God. We have to revisit every crime you've done? She showed us where she stashed the box. I'm going to dinner with her tomorrow night. Are you really? And I'm telling everybody. Why? I'm, well, I'm going for that thing. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right, dude. Me, Tulsi, and... Uh, uh, and Tim Kennedy. Tim, Tim Kennedy. Yeah, that'll be our Monday show. <clears throat> uh, D'Anthony's going to Charlotte, mm -hmm. North Carolina. Thereabouts. And then, yeah, if you're in the Charlotte area, come to that. You can find it on... It's in my bio on Instagram, the link for the tickets and shit. There's also a concert with uh, Gary Sinise, uh, Lieutenant Dan Band. Really? Uh, on Sunday, yeah, which that'll be what I'm doing most of Sunday. And he's the, I, I've said this before, but Gary Sinise has done more for veterans than any human being I know. Yeah. Uh, and, and Sarah Verardo, who will also be there, who runs the Verardo Group and the Independence Fund, is probably number two on that list. Yeah, and we'll air that show on uh, Sunday night here. It'll be uh, Dan Holloway. Tim Kennedy and Tulsi Gabbard and I believe Delco, you're flying out, right? To share. Yeah, brought to you by Delco. Yeah. Brought to you by Delco. Well, not this city. It was supposed to be Giorgio, but he's he's too busy. He's at Coachella. He's too busy fucking following. He's probably stalking Taylor Swift, if I'm being, being honest. No, right? Taylor's got the ta it's Tay Day. She's got a new album out tonight. But, yeah, but she uh, was at Coachella yesterday with she with was well, Kelsey. she was just she was just watching over the weekend. <clears throat> yeah, she's not performing there, I don't think, right? He's he, I think Georgia is probably at that K pop. Wait, band, they might Black do Pink. they might do some uh, some album launch activations there. I don't know. They could. I do think that Giorgio is probably a stalking black. I don't know. Giorgio, He's stalking somebody for sure. For jo sure. Giorgio just informed me that uh the time of the event was when I was supposed to fly out tomorrow or on Saturday, I guess. So I had to reschedule my flight. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. That's nice. <clears throat> <laughs> that's actually kind of surprising. He's usually on top of stuff like that. When it comes to events and stuff, he's usually on top of it. Uh, what are we going to do to shame him? <sighs> I've already shamed him. Oh, yeah, good. Okay. Him. As long as he's been shamed. We're yeah, good. A shamed. diaper. You know? Now he's already pissed in a diaper That's on a live on show air. on yeah. a fucking what was it the Super Bowl show three years ago or four I years think ago? So, yeah. yeah, four years ago. He diaped up. He diaped up for rightfully so. Yeah, rightfully so. But this woman's retarded. I mean, it's a class six felony which carries a maximum of a thirty month prison term. But to be honest, man, I think what they need to do is get her in a GED program. Yeah. And I think it would help. In, in lieu, like, hey, why don't you go learn something in lieu of this? Anything. Like for. At minimum, learn how to not turn yourself into the police. Yeah. I feel, I don't know if there's a class you can go to for that, mm, but sure. find that and send her there. Her rap sheet, by the, the way, includes convictions for theft, meth possession, criminal mischief, disorderly conduct, resisting arrest, and operating a motor vehicle while intoxicated. It doesn't say on what. No. No. She's a great lady, Sarah Harris, and we're wishing her the best here at yeah. Jacob Bros, okay? Yeah. Get better soon, Sarah. Or just get better math and then just not call the police. 
Uh, last but not least, here today, weekend at Bernie's. Earlier this month, two Ohio women, Karen uh, Kazbaum, 63, and Laureen Bia Ferrarlo. <laughs> That's a lot of words. We're both living with 80-year-old Douglas Lehman when the elderly gentleman passed away. That's when the two women, two women uh, concocted a plot to withdraw some final money out of the old man's bank accounts. They loaded him up in a car and drove through the bank's ATM. They made sure the body was seen by the bank tellers as they withdrew $900. Then the pair drove Lehman's body to the hospital and dumped him off without any information regarding his identity or theirs. When the identity of the man was ascertained, the women were arrested and charged with gross abuse of a corpse and theft. Yeah, Bob, there's a, if you look at the link, the Boston 25 News link, um, you can see these two Emmy Award winners. That's them right there. Oh. These are, now, these are the two Ohio women that tried to weaken at Bernie's and get a loan, and it wasn't even that much money. It was they. They tried to withdraw nine hundred dollars, nine hundred bucks, which maybe they knew what he had, and it, that was what he had, right? Um, which is suspect. Like if somebody, if you're a banker, and I don't mean to tell you how to do your job or nothing, sure. But, but if somebody wheel, if two people wheelchair somebody in that's really pasty white and can't sit up straight, and their eyes are closed, chances are they're it's a corpse, and they're getting the money. And then you can definitely know that's the case if they ask for the exact amount that he has in his account. Well, the wild thing, too, is uh, if you look at them, these look like the girls who should be on meth, uh, as opposed to Sarah Harris from the story before. Also, I think it's pretty clear they are. I think, but that's at that age, can you really do meth at that age oh, yeah. and stay alive? Uh, but also, here's the smart thing, though, that they did. They probably, on the drive over with a the dead guy, they, saw, they thought to themselves, all right, $1,000 or more, you're probably going to get flagged for this, and then you're, you're going to have to come into to the bank. So I think they, they went just under. They priced his right, uh, the number there, and they said, hey, let's do nine hunch, and, uh, and I think we can get away with this, and nobody's going to give a fuck. At that I don't price. know if I buy that, to be honest. That's my guess. I think, <laughs> I think some thought went into this. Not on the chick on the left. Show that one, Bob, that chick. She's checked the fuck out. The one on the right seems like the brains of the operation there. You know, there's a new study out that, that shows that people that believe in astrology have lower IQs. Really? Makes sense. That woman on the left definitely believes in astrology. She sure does. Uh, Mercury's in retrograde, so I got to rob this old bitch. She, she looks but like by she... the way, I don't know what the other part of the story here is. If the guy didn't, the old man didn't have any family or anything, that is a victimless crime. If there's no estate for that money to go to, like, and let's let's all be honest. You got a super hot wife. She dies for some reason. You yeah. don't throw it in her one last time. I mean, and then empty out her fucking bank account. Depends on how hard the body is. If it stiffens up. Well, that's you got to keep it warm. And that's the other thing. Uh, if you're so, I gave banker advice. This is advice for people that are trying to pull off this crime. Keep the body warm, mm -hmm. right? Probably put some foundation on their face. Yeah. And get behind. Everybody always forgets behind the ears. Get behind the ears too, so it does. Because the dude's gonna turn gray when the yep. blood stops flowing. Yep. You got to do all of it, dude. Uh, you can't half-ass it if you're going to fuck a dead body. I just want you to be successful. No, they're not fucking them, I don't think. Well, TBD, I guess. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, if he TBD. gets uh, rigor mortis in his wiener. You know, perhaps. TBD. I don't want to rule it out. But this, this was March the 9th, right? Yeah. So fast forward two weeks later, happens again in Brazil this time. And this time we do have pictures of the body, although they blurred it out. Well, Bob found the real pictures. I don't. Are we we're on YouTube, so I don't think we can show it, right? Yeah, why not? It's just a dead dude. Okay. He's dead. It's a corpse. So we did this story. Oh on Ross man, Patterson there's Revolution no way they thought somebody was going to believe that's an alive human being. They all, She almost got away with it. The head tilted back in Brazil. She was pulling out thirty four hundred dollars. Twenty five hundred accounts. Well, yeah, yeah, it's lira, so yeah, about, yeah, yeah thirty four hundred. Thirty four hundred, yeah. and uh, that when the head went back, because she's trying to hold the hand up to get him to sign off on it, that's when they were like, "Oh shit, I think that guy's dead." I like that. Now she tried to claim after they called the police that he died during the signing of the the, the right in the middle of it, huh? Correct. He was good when I brought him in here. When I wheeled him in. Totally alive. Checked his pulse right before he came through the door. Totally fine. Everything, everything was on the up and up. And then all of a sudden, this is Biden's 
This is Bidenomics right here. Uh, you're just taking dead people to get money out of them. And I don't blame him. You know, uh, he's not going to miss the, the goddamn money for sure. No. Uh, now's the point in the show. We get to the drinking bro of the week. Who's back there? Who do we got? Are they still here? Come on up, kids. Oh, for fuck's sake. Come on up. If you're at home, you can also submit on drinkingbros.com. Uh, just click on the old Drinking Bro of the Week submission form there, and you're good to go. Do you want to sit on each other's laps? That no, would be very natural. Okay, <laughs> pop that up about an inch from your face there. All right, here we go. Boom, there you go. What's your name, sir? Ross Graziano. Well, this is shit. Ross 2.0, as Jesse called now. me earlier. Did she? She did. Damn, not my dude. words. Not my words. I've never met another Ross in real life. Same, honestly. That's amazing. Yeah. Congratulations to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to say anything to me? Or? Yeah. Congratulations, uh, or? Su- super happy to, that you got to meet me. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but also not yeah. vice versa. Like, hey, <laughs> I mean, it's nice to meet you too. Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reciprocal. Okay. Yeah. Thank Jesse you. was calling him the upgrade. <laughs> Oh, the, upgr- no shit. the upgrade, yeah, as you, yeah, yeah, the if, better if you version will. of Ross. No, I like Her that. words, not mine. Again. No, I get it. You know? I get it. Absolutely. <laughs> um, who do you want to give drinking bro of the week to? So I'm gonna have outside of this guy who's been my best friend for you know about seven years now. It's uh, Nolan Howe, uh, guy I work for. Uh, okay. Been best friend since middle school. Um, always been there to support me. Lean on. I've been able to lean on him. Uh, it's just great to have a person like that in your life that you can like legit come to with problems and they have solutions. Hell yeah, so dude. That's great. That's fucking awesome. How long have you yeah. been listening to the show? Uh, about four years now. No actually. shit. Yep. Yep. Fuck, we've been, this is our ninth year, man. Yeah, I, I pretty much started listening to you guys when you guys went full time, like just every COVID, day. COVID? Yeah. It's essentially, yep. Yep. Yeah. Right there. God damn. Uh, and who's your buddy here? Yeah, this is. Yeah, so. Pop, pop on yeah. in. You're not going to give him the chair, huh? Uh, Look at you, Ross. No, I didn't want it. I didn't want it. You, you wanted to stand, dude. Look at this guy. Stand and deliver. Put the camera on uh, his, his lovely face, uh, Delco. There so, you go. So uh, I'm Charles Gilpin. I'm uh, from North Carolina, or where I live now. Joined the military many years ago, so I'm originally from Oklahoma. Uh, got to come down here because a friend of ours is going to be at a car show. Okay. And uh, big so YouTuber. Big, another big YouTuber, uh, Puddin's Fab Shop. So going to that. All right. And so that would be my drinking bro outside of this funny looking guy. Uh, so that's uh, Jacob Warner. Okay. Friends from high school. He got into YouTube probably 10 years ago, but didn't really get into YouTube till a couple years ago. And going really well for him, just somebody I've always been able to communicate with and get advice from and that kind of thing when it comes to vehicles, because we all have those problems. Yeah. Uh, which is terrible. Uh, but yeah. That's uh, it brought us down here and brought me back. See my, see the better looking Ross from what I hear. Uh, that's their words, not mine. No, no, no I understand. <laughs> <laughs> totally understand. Totally yeah. get it. How many subscribers does your buddy have? Uh, around two hundred fifty thousand. Okay, two hundred sixty thousand. We're in that range too, but I, I doubt we're gonna gain any more after this episode. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. So. When, I just started listening about three weeks ago. Uh-huh. Whenever we were coming down here, he's like, "You got to listen to this show." We're coming down here. Yeah, definitely gonna gonna continue that. Gonna jump on that Patreon, that wagon. I appreciate uh, it, dude. It, it, uh, it's it helps support all this shit, and we keep it open. You guys, you know, can booze all day, drinking hard AF seltzers all day today. Absolutely, having some laughs. But yeah, there's there's shows where you look back at what we just did here today, and I'm like, they'll they're gonna delete this channel. Uh, this is, there's no idea. <laughs> There's no way. I mean, we just showed a fucking dead guy trying to, <laughs> trying to, trying to sign off for $3,400. You know, we're all going to hell. So, well, I mean, actually, this woman's first, but we'll be at right afterwards. Right after. yeah. 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 OJ's keeping it warm for us. I can tell you that. Uh, RIP, Juice. Where were you when OJ Simpson died? Do you remember? Uh, I'd have been in Fayetteville, yeah. North Carolina. Yeah, right there outside of Fort Bragg. We refuse to call it Fort Liberty. It's not a real place. No, it's not a real place. Uh, so, yeah. Would you guys have a, a moment of silence, or would you do? A couple moments, yeah. For for, oh, for Ron and Nicole? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just want to make sure that the channel got deleted forever. I, I didn't want to leave any stone unturned here. So uh, We appreciate you tuning in. Go to iTunes, rate the show five-star, and leave a quick review. Also, head on over to Spotify. It's just a five-star, and you can walk away. For D'Anthony D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is Drinking Bros Fake News. Good.